afternoon, good evening, wherever you're joining us from. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you taking the time to join us today for a celebration of poetry and of writing and all things um, that come, the excitement that comes with that. So today we are honored to present this celebration of one of uh, Spears books, poets. Um, it's been quite a privilege to work with this poet and just a remarkable person and who writes beautifully. So thank you all for joining us to celebrate that achievement um, of a book being selected as the book of the year by the African Literature Association. So my name is Lillian, I'm the editorial manager here at Spears, book, Spears Books and um, we published Dr. J's Beautiful Fire, which we're celebrating today. And without much ado, I will introduce our laureate that we're here to honor. Joyce Ashen Tangtang, also known as Joyce Ash, is a poet, actress, interdisciplinary scholar, and professor of English at the University of Hartford in Connecticut. A graduate of universities on three continents, Dr. Ashen Tangtang received a B in English with a minor in theater arts from the University of Yaoundé, Cameroon, a master's in library and information science from the University of Aberystwyth in the UK, and a PhD in English, African literature from the city of New York, from the City University of New York. She's the author of many scholarly and creative publications, which include Landscaping Postcoloniality, the Dissemination of Cameroon and the Phone Literature, which was published in 2009, and three poetry collections. These include The Champagne Party Will End, Poems in Honor of Bate Bison, which she co edited in 2008. The Basket of Flaming Ashes, published in 2010, and Beautiful Fire, published in 2018, which we're celebrating today. She has appeared at, as an invited poet in many countries around the world, including England, Germany, Nicaragua, Greece, Costa Rica, Colombia, Bangladesh, Cameroon, and the USA. She's contributed to several international anthologies of poetry, highlighting the plight of minority groups, including Peace for Afrin, Peace for Kurdistan, Hiref Ezoli, Ezoli Zoli, a Wales Cameroon anthology, Poems for the Hazara, published in 2014, Reflections, an anthology of new work by African women poets in 2013, and We Have Crossed Many Rivers, new poetry from Africa, published in 2012. Her poems have been translated into Spanish, Greek, Hebrew, Turkish, Bangla, Arabic, and Romanian. Her awards include Spirit of Detroit Award for Leadership in 1987, Ministry of Culture of Cameroon Award for Outstanding Performance in Theater, which she received in 1989 and 1994, the Bell K. Ribikov Prize for Excellence in Teaching and Scholarship in 2012, and the Catholic Bangladesh Literary Award in 2018. Just so many, many accomplishments. Congratulations, what an honor to be in your presence. <laughs> welcome, welcome, Dr. J. Thank you, thank you so much. And what an honor to be published by Spears. I am very honored to be one of your authors. Thank you, thank you. So also joining us is really one of the a giant in um, African literature and African poetry. Oh, we are really, really honored that he's here with us today. Uh, he's gonna give a few remarks about the, the award. Is Professor Tanuri Ojaide from uh, North Carolina. And he's a professor of Africana studies. He has over 20 poetry collections that he's published. Just a huge, huge honor to be in your presence. Thank you for joining us today. Oi. Thank you, uh, Beatrice. I'm happy to be here to 
talk about uh, to be present, in fact, in the launching of uh, uh, Dr. Ashutai Tang's uh, book. I'm also an author of uh, Spears books. And also, if I said I've won an Allah award, I've won an Allah award the for Nichols. And uh, I know what uh, the book award, the book of the year award, poetry award, which uh, Joyce has uh, earned. I've, I wrote a blog also for the book. So it's a, it's a collection I read carefully. I see myself as a writer and a scholar. And uh, I've always told uh, uh, Joyce that your poetry is so beautiful, so beautiful. You are under, you're understudied, so to say. And, uh, and I'm very happy that this step of getting this uh, book award for poetry is something that we push her. African Literature Association. That's the highest, largest uh, association of African literature. And uh, you can imagine poets from South Africa, East Africa, West Africa, Nigeria, and everywhere, they competed for this uh, award. And uh, Joyce's work uh, came out first. And I'm not surprised because I've watched her, I've read almost all her books, all her poetry books. Here's somebody who though is in the diaspora, as we say nowadays, is highly rooted in the African tradition. I see her talk about African folk songs, uh, Cameroonian folk songs, uh, the, the folklore. She knows much about, so she's someone who's highly rooted. And when you are rooted in your culture, and also you are looking at it from uh, a position of uh, somebody who knows about things, I think you tend to do better. And uh, when I reviewed this book, I thought about uh, the intimacy, the passion, and the sensitivity. Those are very good qualities of a poet, which uh, uh, Joyce has, which she exhibits in this, uh, in this uh, poetry collection. I've read many African poets, and you know, in recent years, with uh, globalization, uh, sometimes you wonder what Africans are writing. Uh, but when you read uh, Joyce's uh, collection, you know that here is somebody who is rooted and very sensitive. She's passionate. She means what she's saying. She's not just putting words together. And you could see somebody inspired to write what she's writing. And uh, so I, is somebody I've, I know closely in the sense that also we've worked together even in scholarly works. We both of us edited a book for Routledge, uh, yeah. the Routledge Handbook of Minority Discourses in African Literature, which uh, which came out last year. It's a major work, and I know her work ethics. She knows how to multitask. I think that's one of her major uh, qualities, that you don't just, you are doing one thing and forget about others. She's doing so many things together, and she does all of them well. She's not a jack of all trades. Nowadays, you can multitask and do very well. So it's uh, with pleasure that uh, I'm here to uh, tell Joyce, that I'm very happy about her work. I'm happy, I think she's going to do more. This is a very fine book, as I wrote. I wrote it earnestly, and I mean it. And I know that uh, uh, she needs to do more. I said she was underexposed. I hope this very book itself will push her further to be read by not only African scholars, but just world scholars of poetry. Because her book is, she talks as, as a woman, as an African woman, and she talks about it in a sensitive way. So whether you are in gender studies, you are in African studies, you are in sociology, you are in everything, I think uh, what she writes makes meaning to all of us as human beings. So she's a fine human being, and I will conclude by saying that uh, it's a book I love, and uh, I'm very happy that it was selected. I'm not surprised, and I think uh, Joyce will win even more prizes in future with her poetry. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, these are some of the writers I read as a student. This is uh, Professor Tony Rojeda is one of those scholars that I thought did not exist in real life. I only read her in uh, African uh, uh, journals when I was in Cameroon. And today, uh, he's not only ushering my book, he's not only written blurbs, we have co-edited uh, together. And having him here is a sign that the child has grown and uh, I've washed my hands 
and I'm eating with elders. <laughs> thank, thank you, you. Professor Jaide. Thank you. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Professor yeah. Jaide. I also um, just want to take a moment to extend condolences to you. We learned you lost your mother yesterday, um, but you still made the time to be here with us. Yeah. Thank you so much. I Thank accept you. our deepest sympathies Thank for you, you and your family. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So um, again, if you're joining us, you're welcome. We're here to celebrate uh, Dr. Joyce Ashton's poetry. Professor. Yes, yeah, Professor. Have, Another I thing have, to celebrate. Welcome, Professor Ashton Tang Tang's uh, poetry book, uh, Beautiful Fire. So we're going to move on to the first reading. Um, Dr. J, over to you. Okay, thank you so, so much. And um, one of the things about my poetry or that I try to do is that I want my poetry not to be for the initiated. I want everyone to enjoy my poetry. So I... I write it in, in a, what I call coffee book style. I don't write very long poems. I make them short, but I also make them accessible. And hopefully I make them poetic so that they can um, satisfy uh, every palette, so to speak. When I have commissioned poems, then you would find me writing very lengthy uh, poems when I'm trying to hit all the themes of the particular celebration. So here I'll read this first poem, Jabulani, and my, like I say, I don't write poetry because I want to publish it. Poetry is the way that I experience the world. So when something hits me, whether happily, whether uh, it's tragic, or I'm just having fun with it, I write poetry. So this uh, first poem is titled uh, Jabulani. Jabulani, for those who remember, was the name of the World Cup ball in 2010. And so I, I was reading everything about uh, the soccer it was the first time the World Cup was going to South Africa. So there was a lot of um, a, a noise, a lot of celebration in the African circles. And then there was this complaint about the ball. They said it was light uh, and players, you kick it and it does, not, um, it does not go in the direction you want and stuff. So when I got that detail, I was having fun with it. And I decided to write a poem about mm -hmm. it, framing it in my own way. So Jabulani. A man is like a Jabulani, the World Cup ball. In a woman's arms, he jacks in spasms. Drowned in the moans of any Vuvuzela, he does the Robert Green and slips inside. Hard to contain, a Jabulani flies to arms of fans in stands, defying poise, skill, and control, or corner kicks from yearning hearts. It is not a question of refreeze or countless replays on a white screen. Some women already know what Adidas knows. A Jabulani is a Jabulani. Even the best sometimes miss. After all, every net has its holes. So that is a uh, Jabulani. Even the best sometimes miss. After all, every net has its holes. The next poem is titled The Eagles Iroko. I wrote this one for Professor Mrs. Christy Okoli Achebe on hearing of the death of her husband, Chinua Achebe. So Chinua Achebe, of course, every African grew up with him reading things fall apart or arrow, um, arrow of God or no longer at ease. But most people, don't even know, was he married? Did he have a wife? Yes, he had a wife who was by him till his death. In fact, no longer at ease has the dedication to Christy Okole. It's a book he dedicated to her when they were not yet uh, married. So he uses, he uses uh, the, the, the maiden name. So when Chinua Achebe died, I imagined this woman going to the widowhood rights and I just get, got, got so offended. I'm like, no. I don't think she should go through that. And so uh, I came as uh, one of uh, Achebe's women to write about the eagles, Iroko. Achebe was known as uh, the eagle. And I think there's a book, The Eagle on the Oro uh, Iroko. And I called Mrs. Achebe the eagles, Iroko. To fear Kwa, she will not be in the ashes. We, the Omwada of Achebe's world, have spoken. 
On both sides of the Atlantic we come to dry her tears with slices of the sun. She will put a heart in the writer's chest to steady his soul on our shifting earth. She who received Chinua's lone bribe no longer at ease for Christy Okole. She who took his bait, putting him at ease, and stayed on the post till the very end. She who planted her feet on the ground like roots, a sturdy Iroko for the celebrated eagle. No, the color of mourning will not touch her skin. We bring Okoma to nourish her feet. Life is for the living. Day wipes out night. It is another morning on creation day. Sophia, she will not be in the ashes. And uh, I would uh, do this one. As you notice, my subject matter, just the, the sprawl from uh, different, uh, different subjects as the world hits me, so I write. Uh, this one is in Cameroon Pidgin English. And on this day in Cameroon, <laughs> we had a double tragedy. The major highway in Cameroon, the Yaoundé Douala high, uh, Highway, the road collapsed. And then there was a train accident. As Professor Tanero Ojaide rightly pointed out, although I'm in the diaspora, although I live in the United States, my heart beats in Cameroon. And I'm still very much connected to the land of my birth. And so seeing this, and of course with social media, it was everywhere. I was so devastated. And I wrote this poem in Pidgin English. Where? Now which kind of trouble meet a way so eh? Now which a God on Gambe fi fix this one? For one day road go broke, train to capsize. My heart go bust for this place where I should done so. Sorry, picture they don't come for my heart. People wear they die, oh. People wear body broke, oh. Small picking, oh. Big person, oh. All chakara outside. My heart go bust for this place where I should done so. Person where he say make them make uh, make the art train long so day. That person going on school now for who sign or now which kind of sense that for daytime. My heart go bust for this place where she don't so. Big man don't enter country like actor. He get command here. He get command there. Who say he be day where road also day he broke. My heart go bust for this place where she don't so. Today, out in the worker for hospital for sicker accident. Hey. hey. So doctor, they be free work so eh? Eh? So government be free give free medicine so eh? Chai, my heart go bust for this place where I should done so. Ah, my country. It go hard for move hard for you. It go hard for me for see your trouble and no shake. Eh? We the sing a time we will small for anthem. But I still mean them for my heart. And deep and meant forever. More. Thank you. You can drop your comments on the chat uh, forum. Thank you. Thank that you. That was amazing. <laughs> yes, beautiful, beautiful. And you could get the emotions come through and feel like you were actually there, there on that day. Thank you so much for capturing that. Um, so among us, we have uh, Someone who is going to do an appraisal of the poetry, uh, Dr. Gilbert Ndi. He is based at the University of Beirut. Uh, he's the author of Letter from America, a Memoir of an Adopted Child, published by Spheres Books in 2019. And his latest publication is The Radio and Other Stories, also published by Spheres Books in 2021. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Ndi. Thank you very much, Lillian. Um... Just for the sake of, uh, <laughs> we, we had people who were meant to come to Bayreuth and they found themselves in Beirut in the Middle East. So this is Bayreuth. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We've had quite interesting experiences. Okay. Yeah, uh, Lillian, how much time do I have? You, you can minutes. take the whole day, but it's five minutes this time. Okay. Okay. Oh my God. I mean, where, where do I start? <laughs> where do I start? <laughs> Okay, I mean, I, 
Um, it's my pleasure, I mean, to do an appraisal of this uh, very rich uh, collection. I've had um, an occasion to engage with uh, Joyce's poetry before, and um, I must commend her for, you know, for this versatile collection that is at once you have celebration, you have celebration. Uh, w what we are doing today is celebration, but of course, in the academic domain, you never celebrate without celebrating, you know. Uh, so uh, you also have indictment, you have incantation, you have lamentation. So it's a very versatile and polyvalent uh, poetry collection. And uh, with, you know, thematic concerns varying from sex, love, war, life, death, pop culture, and, and all you like. And um, a very interesting dimension, which I think uh, Professor Ojai mentioned is you know, that's that, 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 that dimension of Joyce that, you know, she's at once rooted, you know, in her home culture, uh, national culture also, you know, like, but at the same time also has this very diasporic sensibility. So that is what makes her very complete. So she can be able to cut across cultural boundaries. And, um, you know, she's a, a good example of what Ngugi Wathiongo calls um, globalectic citizen. You know, at the same time, you have your home culture as an aki, but you are able, through that home culture, you are able to relate with others. And this is a very interesting, uh, what we call in, in, in literature, locus of, of enunciation. So where does she speak from? It's a very important, uh, you know, question that I raise in her poem, I mean, in, in, her, in, her, in her poetry generally, in this collection in, in particular. And... Um, you know, this is a poem that is born out of experience. William Blake <laughs> titled a series of, of collections, poems of, you know, songs of innocence and songs of experience. I would say I would classify Joyce's poems as poems of experience, uh, experience of pain, experience of ecstasy, uh, ex you know, all sorts of experience that make her whole and which she claims, you know, wholeheartedly. That's, that's why uh, her poetry has a corporeal, like a bodily dimension, which means she is speaking from her body, you know, and instead of what we call committed authors, uh, we, we have here a committing author, you know. She engages us, you know, from the very visceral dimension of our being, you know, and we, we stay glued to her poetry, not only because it engages with our ideas, but also the emotional, the emotive part of it, you know, is quite strong. And then... Um, I mean, it's quite interesting because when, when I was reading this, this collection, I was thinking of Nietzsche, Friedrich Nietzsche, one, one of the most uh, renowned philosophers, who in his um, autobiographical treatise, um, Ete Homo, uh, Behold a Man, he, he, he begins by, by saying, why I write such good books? <laughs> of course, you know, Nietzsche was Nietzsche, you know, so he, he asked, why do I write such good books? <laughs> and he says it's because his books are born out of, bodily experience most of his poems i mean of, of his of his philosophical books were even born out of you know moments of sickness and it is from those moments of sickness that he gained a, a very like incisive perceptuality into the human nature you know and that's why uh, you would have nietzsche writing in a style that can be relatable to even non-philosophers i mean unlike the hegel and those who write very tortuously and, and, and I found this in some of Joyce's poems where you have, she writes in aphorisms. Um, a number of the poems have like, like you know, two, you know, two, two verses, you know, like, so it's, it's, it's that kind of aphoristic style that is at the same time pithy and very incisive, you know, which means you can relate with the poetry even if you are not like a seasoned critic or so it's, a, it's poetry for, for each and every one of us. And I also call it borderline poetry because she, you know, she 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 represents human beings at the, I mean, on the brink, you know, a woman at the point of birth, which is, a, you know, a moment in a woman's life where she is, you know, on the line between life and death. And, you know, so this, this poetry is really like, you know, it, 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 it grabs you from the visceras, you know, it, it's not just poetry that you perceive through your mind, but it engages you. And, um, Unlike what uh, Williams Wordsworth, the famous English poet, romantic poet, who describes poet, I mean, defines poetry as a continuous overflow of powerful emotions recollected in tranquility 
I think most of these poems are not recollected in tranquility. Uh, they, are, they are recollected in turbulence. And I, and I think even, even some of um, what, what poems were not recollected in tranquility, you know, himself. Uh, London 1802 and The Table Stand, I don't, I don't look at them as having been recollected in tranquility. And this is what I find, you know, in Joyce's poem that um, there are poems that are recollected on the tenter hooks of very defining emotions. You know, and mind you, don't don't mistake the author, the poet, and the persona. You know, one of the hallmarks of good writing is the ability to relate. You know, and Achebe himself said that sometimes our comfort, you know, uh, becomes a kind of ad adipose layer that prevents us from relating with other human beings. You know, who are in maybe underprivileged uh, conditions. So, but Joyce is able to cut across. You know. Uh, races, uh, nations, uh, you know, even, even gender boundaries. And mind you that uh, if, if, even though she writes from, a, like I would say, feminist perspective, but, but not all the poems can be characterized as feminist per se. For example, in the case of the, the poem where she talks about uh, bringing back our girls, you know, the, the, the school children who were, you know, taken hostage by Boko Haram, you know, she, she 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 chooses to I mean to relate more with I mean to relate with what the pet what the the fathers of these kids feel. You know, so so it's not just about the woman. I mean, like this is somebody who is able to cut across even those gender boundaries and to relate in a way that, uh, you know, you you not just read the poem. You don't just read because it's a feminist a feminist poem. No, it's it's far beyond that, and it's difficult to encapsulate encapsulate her in this pigeonholes uh, sometimes and then um, you know another dimension of uh, Joyce's poetry is that uh, all along what we call diction I mean d-i-c-t-i-o-n uh, is diction with d-i-c-k uh, you know dick uh, because it, it's always very masculinist and so, sometimes we don't we don't realize how masculinist her diction uh, is you know so but this is a, a, a collection which actually makes use of diction without the K and even subverts, you know, the kind of diction that we are used to uh, in, in social discourses and also in, in very male dominated male, you know, uh, poetry that we are very much used to. So I think this is a, po a poetic collection that is available, I mean, uh, to, to every human being who loves poetry. And um, a dimension that I think my time is up, but there's a dimension of this poetry that I really enjoy is the face to face. Um, I, I, I do literary analysis and, 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 and decolonial studies actually is based on the face to face, you know, the face to face encounter, you know, the you and the I, how do we relate? What does the face of the other mean to you? You know, so the face of the other should serve as a kind of ethical interpolation. Uh, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a context where the colonial studies consider ethics uh, as primordial to, to, uh, to you know, to uh, odontology. So, so, so we, we have to consider ethical relations above any other thing. So what does the face of the other, be it a woman, a man, be it uh, a cut? Because, I mean, she has poems that, you know, are about Kurdistan, you know. Yes. So I know you're enthusiastic. I could go on. My, my, my time is up. Uh, in this kind of analysis, I mean, you don't end, you stop. This is actually part of the, you know, the, <laughs> you don't end, you stop. Thanks so much. <laughs> oh, hi, Lillian, Lillian, yes. we're going yes. to do a um, um, little switch. We go to the translations before we come to uh, Dr. Fombele. Oh, OK. Yes. Yes, so um, in, the, in the intro I mentioned earlier, Dr. J's works have been translated into many languages and today we are honored and delighted that we have some of those um, poets who have translated her work here with us today. Um, one of them is Amal. Amal um, has translated one of Dr. J's poem into Arabic. No, in fact, the whole book. The whole book. Oh, the whole book. Yes. Wow. <laughs> What a if, task. I, if, I, if, I, if I if I can say, say that yeah, Amal Gamal can... has translated a, a beautiful fire, and it has <sighs> been this project has been sponsored by the Ministry of Culture in Egypt and the National Translation Center in Egypt, and um, so uh, we are planning that launch as soon as COVID is over. I'm sure I'll be traveling to Egypt for that uh, big launch. 
But uh, today, Amal is just going to give a little uh, tip. She's going to do uh, two poems. And so I'm going to read. Uh, so that's Amal on your screen. And so- Amal, let me introduce. Amal is a celebrated Egyptian poet and writer of children's books. She has translated Beautiful Fire into Arabic, which will be published, published soon, courtesy of the Ministry of Culture, like Dr. J said. Um, so she'll read two poems, um, and Dr. J will read them in English first. <laughs> okay, so one, one of um, the poems I'll read is uh, Cigarette. Like uh, uh, Gilbert was saying, it is hard to pigeonhole me where my ideas are coming from and how I relate this. Somebody may hear this poem and wonder. The inspiration actually came from uh, Purple Hibiscus by Chimamanda Adichie, where there is a scene where the priest is drinking water and a young Kambili, 15 year old who has a crush on the prince is looking at the water go down his throat and wish she was that water. <laughs> and and <laughs> in this case, I wrote mine on a cigarette. I want to be a cigarette. If only to touch your lips, feel the wetness of your mouth, lie on your tongue, burn with desire, turn soft into ash. I want to be a cigarette. Amal, in Arabic. Please unmute, Amal. Unmute, Un unmute. Amal, you are muted. Okay. Hi. Yes, we can hear Do you. you hear me? Yes. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi. So I I will just go read it again so that we get that connection back to the Arabic to give you your cue. So cigarette. Yes. I want to be a cigarette, if only to touch your lips, feel the wetness of your mouth, lie on your tongue, burn with desire, turn soft into ash. سيجارة فقط أريد أن أكون سيجارة لألمس شفتيك أحس رطوبة فمك أستلقي فوق لسانك وأحترق بالرغبة وأتحول من عومة إلى رماد Thank you <laughs> Beautiful And I'm going to do another one blunt <laughs> yes. And uh, Amal and I are kindred souls. We are sisters of uh, other mothers. And we love it when, especially when we are doing little feisty womany, <laughs> womanist poems. So this one is Blunt. And it is, as the title says, Blunt. I don't want to write poetry. No mix of metaphors here, whether direct or indirect. No similes to compare anything. I will tell you this straight up. Sex is a toy. Sex is an end. There is no gentleman between his legs. Your white dress is part of the act. You are playing virgin for you are not. Once in the drama, you stay right inside playing his mama, his sister, even his mistress. There's nothing like becoming one. If he dies, you learn the truth. In some parts, you belong to him counted and disposed like property. Don't give me that crap about love. Your best friend is your plastic and non-alkaline batteries. Pick your shape, pick your color. You need no bubble in your ear and no heap of snoring sounds. So this is it, I said it, blunt, 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 I said it. صراحة جارحة لا أريد أن أكتب شعرا هنا باستعارات مباشرة أو غير مباشرة ولا تشبيها لنقارن به أي شيء سأخبرك بشيء صريح أن الجنس مجرد لعبة الجنس غاية إذ لا يوجد رجل مهذب فيما يخص شهوته سوبك الأبيض جزء من الأمر تلعبين دور عزراء وأنت لست كذلك وما أن تبدأ الدراما 
حتى تعلقي بداخلها فورا فتظل تلعبين دور أمه أو أخته أو سيدته لا شيء من ذلك يشبه توحدكما إن مات ستتعلمين الحقيقة لأنك بعض أعدائي ترتي تخصينه ولذا تعدين ممتلكات لا تذكري لي أي سخافات عن الحب أفضل صديق لك هو لعبتك البلاستيكية وبطارياتك غير القلوية انتق الشكل الذي تحبين اللون الذي تفضلين لست بحاجة إلى فقاعات داخل أذنك ولا كومة من أصوات الشخير هذا هو الأمر قلته بصراحة 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 <laughs> Thank you so much, Hama. And uh, will you please give me a minute? Yes. Okay. I um, congratulations, and I want to tell everybody uh, that every time I read Joyce's poetry, I feel uh, the heart of life. I feel a piece of facts. I feel humanity, motherhood, childhood, poor people, justice and injustice. I'm very lucky to get uh, her book and uh, to introduce her to the whole Arabic world. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Amar. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, Lillian, the next. I'm really, really enjoying listening to it in Arabic, <laughs> even though I don't understand it. Just, yeah, the, you the, know, music, the musicality. The, yeah, the, the language, you know, it just comes across, even if you don't understand what it's conveying, it just, it's just so beautiful. Thank you so much, Amar. And thank you for taking on that task of uh, translating poetry <laughs> and bringing Dr. J to an Arabic, big, big audience, an Arabic audience. So thank you so much for doing that. Dr. J's work has also been translated to Bangla. And we have uh, Aminu Rahman here to, who did that. Um, um, yes. Aminu is one of the most yes. celebrated poets from Bangladesh. He has over 10 collections of poetry. He has translated many poems from Beautiful Fire into his language, Bangla. Um, so he's going to read uh, some of uh, do, those translations. Dr. J will read in English first. Yeah, before that, I just I want to mention, because of Joyce is a very close friend of mine for last more than 10 years. Actually, we first met in, Med uh, in, Colum uh, in Nicaragua. Nicaragua, Nicaragua, yes, Granada Poetry Festival. And, and, and after that, Joyce came to Bangladesh. And Joyce was awarded Kathak Literary Award in Bangladesh. And uh, moreover, actually, Joyce is be, uh, in this book. This is a 400 pages translation book where uh, the 36 uh, contemporary, top to contemporary poets of the world has been translated into, into Bangla. And Bangla is the language of Tagore, Nazrul, and Jibananda Das. So when you just read the, uh, listen the Bangla poetry here, you can get the essence of Bangla. Uh, poetry of Tagore or some other thing. And Joyce is a wonderful, wonderful poet and wonderful friend. So thank you, uh, Amino. And uh, the one minute introduction doesn't begin to do Amino justice. He's a poet of the world. And I can just begin to say how many spaces Amino has taken, has taken me to, how many anthologies. And uh, so I'm going to read into the beautiful fire which is the poem that inspired the title of this uh, collection, Beautiful Fire. And uh, I'll do, I think, Forget Me Not, you also have yeah. that. So we'll do yeah. Into Beautiful Fire, you read that, then I do Forget Me Not also. Yeah. So I want to come to the forge with you to see you fashion a new life for me. The tongues of fire licking warm juice from the pores of my body. I want to come to the forge with you to see your flaming hands sculpt words that travel from my navel disappearing in that abyss of bliss hidden from sight. Let me faint at your feet in that forge and feel your mouth breathe life from your rivers. Pray, let me come to the forge with you. Measure my sweat with the goblet of your heart. 
সুন্দর আগুনের ভেতরে আমি তোমার সাথে দৃঢ়ভাবে আসতে চাই আমার নতুন মৃত্যুর বেশ তোমার সাথে জিওভারা আলত গরম অগ্নি অবলেহন করছে আমার শরীরের সূক্ষ্ম রন্ধ্র নিঃসৃত রস আমি তোমার সাথে দৃঢ়ভাবে আসতে চাই দেখতে চাই তোমার জ্বলন্ত হস্ত যুগলের শব্দের ভাস্কর্য যা ভ্রমণ করে আমার অন্তর্ধানকৃত নাভি থেকে অতল অপরে স্বর্গসুখ লুগানো আছে দৃষ্টির বাইরে তোমার পায়ের উপর আমাকে মূর্ছা যেতে দাও দৃঢ়ভাবে এবং তোমার মুখের নিঃশ্বাস অনুভব করতে দাও তোমার জীবন নদী থেকে প্রার্থনা করো যেন আমি তোমার সাথে দৃঢ়ভাবে আসতে পারি আমার ধর্ম নিঃসারিত তোমার হৃদয়ের পাত্রে Thank you so much. I I just love the musicality of 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 your of your voice. I always tell you that when we go for readings and and you read I I I bathe in the cadences of your of, of your voice. Wonderful. So I'll I'll go to uh, forget me not and this is a uh, a poem again uh, rooted from my childhood but brought to bear on my on my presence. Forget me not. When I was a child I measured my steps with bright flowers on the narrow shortcuts to school. Two flowers I still remember. The sunflower at the start of my journey. Its petals like the sun lit my way. I touched it not for fear I would delay. But for every forget me not, I stopped and picked a bunch. They were near my journey's end. The white, blue and purple always seduced my youthful eyes. I rubbed them on my sweaty nose and brushed them softly against my lips. Many years have gone by, but there's something I want you to know. Each time you rub your nose against mine and pat my lips so softly, my soul whispers tenderly, forget me not. Forget me not. Ama ke bhulo na. Jokho na mi choto chilam, আমি তোমার পদক্ষেপ মাপতাম উজ্জ্বল ফুলের সাথে ছোট পথের স্কুলে যেতে দুটি ফুলের কথা আমার মনে আছে পথের শুরুতে থাকা সূর্যমুখী ফুল এর পল্লব আমার পথে আলো ছড়াত আমি এগুলো ধরতে চাইতাম না ভয়ে নয় দেরি হয়ে যাবে বলে কিন্তু প্রত্যেক দিনই আমাকে ভুল না আমি থামতাম এবং এক গুচ্ছ নিতাম এরা আমার যাত্রা পথের শেষ পর্যন্ত থাকত সাদা নীল এবং বেগুনি সব সময় আমার তরুণ চোখকে বিমোহিত করত আমি আমার ঘরমাত্র নাসিকায় এদের ঘোষতাম আমার ওষ্ঠের উপর আলতু পরশ বলাতাম কত বছর পার হয়ে গেল কিন্তু আমি তোমাকে এমন কিছু জানাতে চাই প্রতিবার তুমি যখন তোমার নাসিকা আমার সাথে ঘস যখন আমার ওষ্ঠের উপর আলতু ভাবে স্পর্শ করো আমার আত্মা মৃদুস্বরে বলে ভুলো না আমায় আমাকে ভুলো না Somebody just commented on the chat. Naomi said, it's, it's like the secret of learning another language is tied to poetry. <laughs> <laughs> just the way you know you read it is so beautiful um another comment on the chat is banga seems to be rich in sexy sibilants that's <laughs> uh, <laughs> another one just saying so beautifully rendered i mean no beautiful um great memories uh <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you so we, thank we, you we and oh yeah um alexi alexi chaya from canada says uh it's like some of the songs we used to sing when without understanding anything you know when we we're growing up we watched a lot of indian movies and we could follow the, di- the dialogue even though we didn't understand it it was just nice it was beautiful language to listen to <laughs> <laughs> and today we have one of our own you know whose works has been translated into one of those asian languages and it's just so beautiful um bakume says bengali is so musical so yes. listen but one so thing one thing i 
one thing I just want to mention here. Joyce is one of the very, very rare poets in the world. And only pray to Joyce. Joyce, you don't distract your mind for any other thing. Because the poetry is yours. So you have to win the world with the poetry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank, yeah, thank thank you, you so for much. That. And thank you for the, the platforms that you've given me. Thank you. <laughs> Pleasure. Yes. Lillian? Okay, so um, another language that uh, Dr. J's work has been translated into is Spanish. And we have one of those um, translators here today. Uh, in, fa in fact, um, Johnny is, is, is reading it in Spanish. The translator for the Spanish uh, is uh, Leon Blanco, who is not here. Okay. okay, so Johnny is going to read one of the poems that has been translated into Spanish. And you have info on Johnny? He's going to read talk to me. Okay. And uh, if you can, uh, he's since a teacher. Yeah, go ahead. go ahead. Johnny Baco is a teacher of English in Colombia, and he served as one of the English Spanish translators when uh, Professor Ashun Tangtang attended the popular Mendelin International Poetry Festival in Medellin, Colombia. Yes, so. Uh, hey, unmute, Johnny. Johnny, you need to unmute. So this was in 2012, and Johnny was a young man then. I think he was a, a young student, uh, very interested in English, and served as one of uh, our translators. In fact, he was tied to, uh, to me, very vibrant. And when I was organizing this, uh, I said, why not reach out to, to Johnny so we could reconnect? That was 2012. Math is, uh, the PhD is not in math, so I can't tell you how many years that is without making a mistake. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it's close to 10 years and uh, good to see you. But if we can also have the, the Hebrew, this poem has been translated into Hebrew too. So maybe we just move from Spanish to Hebrew. Uh, is Yifat on? Okay, let's find Yifat. Yes, I see her. Yes, so if we can have three of us on, spotlight three of us. So if you can just tell okay, us let about- Let me introduce uh, Yifat. Yifat Avna is an adjunct instructor of Judaic studies at the Greenberg Center of Judaic Studies at the University of Hartford. Okay, um, and I, uh, Yifat is going to read the translation by one of Israel's uh, celebrated poets, Ami Orr. So this is talk to me. I'll read it in English, and Johnny, you do it in Spanish, and Yifat would uh, read the Hebrew translation. It's just such a, a pleasure and privilege to to get this poem traveling in different languages of the world. So talk to me, and this is from my first collection, a basket of flaming ashes. Talk to me. And let, let me tell you a little bit about this, this poem. This poem was a reaction to one of my uh, friends. I don't know whether he's on here. My, uh, maybe I don't tell who it is, but one of my friends where the wife was in Cameroon and the wife may be, oh, may be on here today. And okay, she was- I'm more interested in whether you succeeded. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so she, she was in Cameroon for Christmas and the husband was telling me how much he had missed her. And then on this day, he was going to the airport and he called me, he's like, oh, Joyce, you know, she's coming today. And I'm like, ah, that's so wonderful. I said, guess what? You have those balloons at the airport. Uh, can you buy one of those welcome balloons? You know, you've missed them so much. And there was silence. And then I'm like, what? He said, come on now, I'm an African man, we don't do things like that. I'm like, huh? What do you mean by we don't do things like that? You've told me how you've missed her. She's gone away. You know, at the time they had just one, uh, one child, a son, and she was away with the son. And then he, he said, you know something? I think I'm going to write a poem about that. If a woman can see her husband and does not know that the husband has missed uh, her, what kind of woman is that? I know the beginning of the poem. She looked at me and did not understand. <laughs> so by the time she, he came back from that airport, I had written this poem and sent to his email. You know, the poem is titled, Talk to Me. I understand the language of your body. 
the verbs of your fingers, the nouns of your look, but talk to me tonight. Dress me up in capitals, lowercase me in song, string your letters like beads, adorn my waist in words, tongue your vowels on my bosom, tickle my brain with consonants, cool your heat in syllables, but talk to me tonight. Háblame. Comprendo el lenguaje de tu cuerpo, el verbo de tus dedos, los sustantivos de tu mirada, pero háblame esta noche. Disfrázame en mayúsculas, hazme minúscula en la canción, ensarta tus letras como avalorios, adorna mi pecho con palabras. Lenguetea tus vocales en mi pecho, cosquillea mi cerebro con consonantes, enfría tu calor en sílabas, grita mi nombre esta noche. Thank you so much. I love, let me hear that last line. I used to love the last line when I'm in Colombia or Nicaragua. Give me that last line in Spanish again. Grita mi nombre esta noche. Esta noche. When I, when I hear that, I'm like, that's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and uh, we get to talk to me in Hebrew, uh, translated by Ami Oz, celebrated... Uh, you want to Google Ami O, A M I R O R. And he also wrote a blurb for Beautiful Fire. And I'm so lucky that uh, I have someone from my university to, trans, uh, to read it in Hebrew. Yifat, thank you so much. The bare light. Ami Mevinat Fat Gispa. Et hapealim shel et beotecha. Et shmot ha etem shel mabatcha. Aval the bare light halayla. הלבש אותי באותיות ראשיות, שיר אותי בקטנות. השחר אותיותיך כחרובים, עקר את מותניי במילים. תשק לשמך תנועות על חזי, דקדק את מוחי בעיצורים. צנן להתך בהברות. קרא בשמי הלילה. Thank you so much. Uh, if I just stay there, or I'll do uh, my uh, my new husband with you, and then I'll also do the award in us. Uh, uh, we'll do the Spanish. Uh, Johnny, you ready with that? The award? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm ready. Okay. 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 So let me read it in English. Again, uh, this one is from uh, is from a basket of flaming ashes. The award. Yes, we are celebrating an award here. And this time I was inspired by a friend who won an award when I wrote this one. I welcome you with outstretched arms. Your harvest is too big for the band. The gong and drum sing your return. Children have gone to sleep your name on their lips. Women have oiled their bosoms for the moon's glow and your eyes too. Men wait to lift you off the ground, but I wait in my hurt with herbs soaked in warm water for your tired feet. Manyanga to massage your aching back. Lemongrass to purge impurities of road food. And I saved some lamp oil to see the glint in your eyes. Tonight, we will not see the moon. Tonight, we will not see the moon. El premio. Te recibo con brazos abiertos. Tu cosecha desborda el granero. El gong y los tambores anuncian tu retorno. Los niños regresan del sueño con tu nombre en los labios. Las mujeres han lubricado sus vientres para el brillo de la luna. Y también para tu ojo. Los hombres esperan levantarte del suelo. Pero en mi choza yo espero. Con un enjuague de hierbas para tus pies cansados. Manyanga para masajear tu adolorida espalda y hojas de limoncillo para purgar las impurezas de la comida chatarra. Y un poco de aceite en la lámpara para ver el centellar de tus ojos. Esta noche, no ver la luna. Esta noche. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. And I'll go to uh, one of my favorite poems from uh, Beautiful Fire. As some of you know, I, <laughs> I am single. And so one of the things that people keep bothering me about is 
when are you going to remarry? You're not going to remarry. When are you bringing that new husband? And so I had fun writing this one. This one is titled, My New Husband. <laughs> and uh, for all those who are waiting <laughs> to hear me, uh, so, and I'm going to read it in, um, in English and Yifat is going to uh, read the translation in Hebrew. So this evening, I told my new husband, I will come to bed by 9 p.m. to spread the table for a long nightly feast. I will banish night clothes from my closet. I will be Eve without the apple, a human body in his garden waiting for holy harvest. This evening, I told my new husband, no more traveling to conferences, seeking knowledge beyond his brain. My travels will be limited to where his driving takes me. Stuck by his side, I will prove I was taken from his rib. This evening, I told my new husband, I will waste no time in taking his name and tame the urge to self-identify. As for children, I give up my womb. He's our child for life. But it's 2 a.m. I realize I'm writing another poem. <laughs> הערב אמרתי לבעלי החדש, אגיע למיטה התשע, לפתוח שולחן לחגיגת לילה ארוכה. אעלים את בגדי הלילה מהארון, אהיה חווה בלי התפוח. גוף אנושי בגנו הממתין ללהבים של מחרשתו. הערב אמרתי לבעלי החדש, לא עוד מסעות לכנסים לבקש ידע מעבר לספרו. מסעותיי הוגבלו למקומות אליהן הנהיגה שלו תיגע. נעוצה בצידו, הוכיח כי נלקחתי מצלעו. הערב אמרתי לבעלי החדש, לא אבזבז זמן על שמו ואאלף את הצורך בזהות עצמי, ובאשר לילדים, אוותר על רחמי, הוא ילדינו הנצחי. אך השעה שתיים לפנות בוקר, Yes, it's 2 a.m. and I realize I'm writing another poem. So <laughs> thank you uh, for this reading. Thank you, Yife. Thank you, Jani. Thank you, oh, Aminu. Okay. Thank you, Amal. I just wanted uh, to showcase a little bit of how uh, my poetry is traveling in the world and it's so wonderful to hear it in these uh, different languages. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, thank you, say it's an honor to hear your, your, your voice and congratulations thank on your you. award. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you Jenny. And also, thank you, Yifat. Congrats, Professor Jay. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. And so, uh, Lillian, over to. Yes. To to someone who teaches a uh, beautiful fire. <laughs> yes. Um, I, wanted, I wanted to make a comment that, you know, uh, I know the pandemic happened and we have not been able to do things the way we normally do, but having this kind of celebration virtually has given us all the privilege, uh, opportunity to listen to poetry in different languages. <laughs> You know, we can all sit in the comfort of our home or wherever we are and the world comes to us and we get to celebrate Dr. J and how far her work has traveled in this in this way. We would not have had that opportunity because like she said, she goes to conferences, she goes all over the world and she, she presents and she performs her poetry there. But today we get that distinguished privilege of having her work per performed in another language, in other languages, and so many people are just enjoying it if you read the comments in the chat. So thank you to all those who've read, and thank you to all those who have translated. So we have somebody who is going to appraise um, some of uh, the poetry. Thank you for the who comments. Teaches it? Yes, some, someone who teaches it, Dr. Eunice Foni Fonze Fombele. She's a senior lecturer of African Literatures and Cultural Studies in the Department of English and Cultural Studies at the University of Boya. And she is the head of records in the Faculty of Arts. And she has published extensively in both national and international journals and has co-edited two books, Eco-Cultural Perspectives and Perspectives in Marginality. So welcome, uh, Dr. Fombele. 
Can you find her? Uh, if you can turn your video yeah. on, then we yeah. can see you. I just did. It yes, shows okay. that the network is horrible this afternoon in Cameroon. So just, uh, and, uh, just try to go as quick as you can. <laughs> OK, uh, thank you. I uh, thank you for the opportunity to talk about my students' experiences as they, uh, they were introduced to Beautiful Fire, uh, a collection they like, they fondly call to my students a very rich collection. Uh, and I'm going to just give um, a, my students' response to it and the spiral inspiration that triggered, uh, that BF triggered in, in my students. And I'm going to look at it from, from uh, my students saw the, the, the collection as a polyphonic text and from the way they, are so, they saw it in, uh, from the feminist perspective. Now, we, according to my student, Joyce expresses traditional themes in very innovative ways. When you look at the poems from Call Me Woman, Nuggets of Passion to Politics of Being, BF, as my students call it, ob they observe that the collection does not uh, restrict what it talks about. They see that it is diverse. It has a, a, a polyvalent voice. And according to my students, the text is opens them to so many horizons because to them, the other texts they have been interpreting in class, um, take them to a level of some narrow interpretation of textuality. But according to them, this text opened them to various types of horizons from uh, the local uh, to the global and back to the local. Interestingly, BF to my students presents itself as a kind of text that it can profile peace in the current dispensation of Cameroon because the poet is uh, able to weave imagery that goes back and forth across Cameroon using various mm -hmm. lingua franca that are used in Cameroon and abroad. So my students identify a uh, heteroglossia in, 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 a, in, in beautiful fire. According to my students, um, there are many voices that come out in Beautiful Fire. When you read the poems, you can identify social dialects. You can identify uh, some characteristics of various group behaviors. You can identify professional jargons. You can identify even generic language, language of different generations, language of different age groups, language of even authorities or official language. And so one of the things uh, that is interesting to mention here is that we are running a, a, a research project called a social linguistic profiling of Cameroon. And Beautiful Fire is, 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 is one of the texts uh, that almost all the students are using. For primary, as primary data to, uh, to demonstrate uh, the profiling of social, the literary profiling of social linguistics in, 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 in Cameroon. So the text, uh, Beautiful Fire, has gotten an audience in my students. They enjoy the deep poetic language, they enjoy the open phalanx, they enjoy the lingua franca, they enjoy the mother tongue and uh, that all the perspective of the, the polyphonic text, my students uh, do uh, 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 enjoy it. And um, when, when we go for conferences uh, in Cameroon, students from various uh, universities in Cameroon 
they usually come to me to ask about Beautiful Fire, which means that the, my students so love the book to the extent that they, they, they discuss it with their friends, with their, with their peers in a, other universities, they introduce it to them and they talk about the book with a lot of passion. So, so it's a beautiful fire has to get more copies in Cameroon for our students. They love the book. They see, and, and one of the things that they do in class is that they love to perform the poems before they engage in analyzing them. They, 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 they are so passionate about the poems because they, they, when, when they engage in discussions, you, you, you realize that everybody identifies, everybody has a voice. There, there is a freedom of speech which comes from the poems and then allow the students to also cultivate that uh, freedom of free speech and then construct ethical truths thematically, literally, and cognitively. So, uh, and also my students have, uh, have seen a feminist dimension of the, in, 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 a, in a poem, a very strong one. And, and they usually discuss that the poem, the poem, the collection does not concern itself with uh, separatist feminism, all, all, all the uh, topical um, issues that feminists usually discuss, but, uh, the collection presents itself in very daring diction. And one of the poems, especially the poem, the letter to a poet, even says, says this, uh, that uh, Joyce uh, puts simple words in strange places. And it makes the feminist voice that came come out, my students describe it as uh, glocal feminist poetry with a linguistic experimentation. So they, 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 they look at her, her feminist view as the one that is moves from the local to the global, and, but has an anchor in the local, in the local. And um, they do appreciate that perspective of her feminism, which moved from the, 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 the issues, feminist issues that we know to feminist issues that everybody can identify with, men can identify with, women can identify with, children can identify with, they all can identify with. So to my students, the feminist issues that come out are ethical, are ethical issues. If it's about what is right, what is ethically right and what is ethically wrong. And so it makes them to see feminist from a different perspective, especially the boys. Uh, they love feminism when they read uh, uh, Joyce's uh, collection of poetry because it, it, it takes them to a different dimension and, uh, and they're very happy. And I talk to the... Uh, them before this presentation and they are they, they, they publish us to make the book available for us here in Cameroon. Thank you very much. Uh, thank, thank you so much. To get you all the way from uh, Cameroon, I'm, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that uh, you could participate and even with the some of the challenges we got the gist and you've me this full low down from the students so i i i think we need to plan for me to to skype your class live you know we need we need to Ooh. try to do something like like that so that i wonderful cross. yeah so I, I i can i can talk to them you know uh, and one of the things i want to mention is that the book is taught from level 200 to phd using different courses Okay. So, thank, thank you so, thank you so much. That was great. I, I really, I really enjoyed that. I mean, those analysis. I, I mean, that was that is really great. I'm glad you invited her, Professor Jay. 
that was really <laughs> fantastic. I really, really enjoyed that analysis. <laughs> thank, thank you, thank you. Uh, like uh, most speakers have said, I may be in the United States, but my umbilical cord was buried somewhere. And uh, I never miss uh, that, uh, that link. So uh, thank you. And yes, uh, Spears Media, I hope you heard her. The book needs to go to Cameroon. I send drips and drops, but we need it, uh, more copies. Yes, definitely working on it. Uh, a few comments from the chat. Ekpe um, Enyang is also a poet says, the soothing tongues of the beautiful fire can be found in a caring, careful selection of words. Uh, Blessed Ngoi said, simple words in strange places. That should be a title of a thesis on beautiful fire. <laughs> and then um, Enongene Sone says, congratulations, keep up the good work. I'll be introducing your poetry to my undergraduate and postgraduate students in South Africa. Um, yeah, so uh, many, many more comments on the chat, just celebrating your work and uh, people be inspired. I, I, to, I to hope you will save this. the chat for me so I can see later. <laughs> yes, I think it will show on the recording. It will show okay. on the recording. Thank you so, so, so thank so. you, thank you, Dr. Formella, all the way from Cameroon. Uh, it's it's huge that you made the time to join us despite all the connectivity issues that we face. It was really, really good listening to your perspective and your students and how much they're enjoying this uh, poetry. It's really good that we have one of us and their works is being treated at that level um, up to, to PhD. So thank you for that. So moving on with the program, should we go on to a toast? Because we're celebrating here. Well, if, 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 if my publisher wants to give a toast, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so we have someone who is, who is going to pop champagne um, to, to commemorate this, this celebration because, you know, if, if, if we're back home, we'll have the palm wine where we, we, we pour and we thank the ancestors for all. Um, they've done because, you know, a, a daughter has, has come back with a big, big harvest um, in this award. So we will call on your sister in Canada. No, no it's, it's it was back to the publisher. Where's, uh, where's Dr. Fokwa? <laughs> <laughs> he, he, went, he went back, but if we're talking about celebration, maybe it's time for me to, um, uh, to, celebrate. I have my uh, nephew who is uh, celebrating his birthday today. And as always, auntie is somewhere doing something else. And instead of um, having two separate celebrations, I said, you know something, I'll give you a shout out today. It's JK on the call, Joko George. Can you find him? Lillian, can you find Joko George? He's not there, unless he's under a different name. But if you are, indicate. Joko George, if you are there, could you could you indicate? Okay. If if not, we'll get him uh, along okay. the lines, and maybe sure. in his uh, celebration, I would also get some uh, drink to to honor this the this this award. But I want us yeah. to uh, to continue. Um, uh, like I said, one of the things that I, I do with my poetry is to reach across, you know, beyond the scholarly angle. So maybe Lillian can uh, talk to that and call on those who've read who may want to share uh, some of their favorite poems. Certainly, certainly. And with the poems we've all listened to, if it, if there are themes that we can relate to is written in language that's accessible to many, many people. And um, this book was published three years ago and so many people have copies already and they've read and enjoyed the poetry. Some of them are here today and they wanna share some of their favorite. Um, is uh, Professor Fai Donatus, are they on? Um, Lillian, I, I, I think I'm supposed to be next in the program, Naomi Keller. 
Oh, did Naomi, you know? Naomi, let, let's get some poems before you come on. Okay. <coughs> is, is Professor Fa is not on, Fai Donatus, uh, Shiri Achu? Shiri drop, dropped off the, the call, had to go, go somewhere, but Blessed Ngoi is there. Okay, Blessed Ngoi. You want to share one, one of the poems you enjoy? Sure, sure. <laughs> so I, I, first of all, uh, to uh, Professor Shun Tan Tan, thank you very much for always um, letting me know about these wonderful things. And your collection is, is just history. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful collection and I really enjoy most of the poems in there. But I'll be reading one that kind of connects me to a lot of beautiful things, just love and all that stuff. And also because you have personally shown me a lot of love as a mother and as a mentor uh, since I came to this place. Which, 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 one, which one have you cho chosen so I can talk about it? Which one are you, have you chosen? Which one? What's the title? The Pulse, the Pulse of Love. Okay, so uh, I'm glad you're reading uh, that because the Pulse of Love, like someone said, it'll be, <laughs> you'd be putting yourself in a difficult place if you want to think that all the poems are about me and stuff because sometimes I just, that poem is from the, it's from a male perspective. So sometimes I write, although I'm female, I write as if I'm <laughs> a male. So if you try to understand it from me as a person, then you will miss it. So this would come off even better because it's written from a male persona's perspective. So, and um, then because uh, Dr. Fombele talked about uh, letter to a poet, I will talk about that and I would love you to read, read that too. It's, it's you, yeah, check your, check your, your phone. <laughs> okay. okay, so let's, uh, let's, let's start with the pulse of love. Looking at you in the glow of light, my body burns for your cooling fires. How can I contain the waves building inside? I squeeze you gently on the dance floor, like I'm testing the ripeness of a mango. How do I stop this hunger burning my lips? Your sweet slit reveals a scar known to my eyes. My fingers long to touch and make you squirt. How do I stop this bulge sprouting here? Memory on memory foils my aching desire, threading from a gay days of childhood. How do I prove my love beyond this lust? So that is that one. Thank we you. <laughs> Thank you so much. And uh, the next one, you, you know, as a poet, sometimes you receive some very interesting uh, text messages. So I used to publish my poems on, on, on my website. And then for a long period, I did not publish anything. And this guy sent me this uh, message. He's like, why are you not publishing anymore? Uh, please publish. Um, I'm not writing to you. It's not you that I want. It's your words that I'm looking for, you know? So forget about me. It's not as if I know you don't know me and uh, you think I'm trying to get to talk to you. No, I'm missing your words, not you. So please write, I want to read. And so that inspired me to, and he said, I like the way you use the words. You, you know, you do some strange things and the, the, it's almost as if I'm, I'm dating many women when I'm reading your poetry because you do some strange things with the words. I'm like, what? So I wrote this poem out of that letter to a poet. <laughs> okay, so let me, let me, let me jam it. Dr. J. Yes, and Naomi will can speak we, after this. Naomi, can Naomi go now because she says she needs to go? Yes, as soon as, as, soon as uh, um, Blessed is done with this one. Yeah, it's a very short one. Okay, so, dear poet, your words squeeze my balls, rub honey on my pole. When you put simple words in strange places, you place my dick in strange cons, the fantasy I foolishly crave. Your words are my lover. I pine for their return, holding shadows at dawn. Just your words, nothing more. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. And uh, 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 Naomi, sorry, yes, we, have to have, we have to have you in a, in a hurry all the way from South Africa. 
Yes, it's pretty late here, and, and I have a nanny looking after my baby, so I need to go. <laughs> okay. So, sorry, um, we, lost, we lost uh, that time difference. Should I put you? Yeah, here no, ahead? not a problem. Um, so let me do my part now. I'm I'm going to give a feminist um, appraisal of your work, which I read in two hours because it was just so spellbinding. I couldn't put down. So um, like we say in Cameroon, um, beautiful fire, carry fire. Uh, I don't know how to translate that. Somebody can do it for me on the chat. Um, but I really thought like beautiful fire, carry fire, you know? So it's, it's, for me, it's, it's, a, it's a pristine collection of work. And what is most striking for me as a feminist scholar is that it, 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 it had, it has at, at the very heart of it is women's experience. And what I love most is the raw honesty with which you convey those experiences. So it's very hard not to be moved when you read a poem like Incantation about uh, two women, you know, one comforting the other who is suffering from cancer. You, you cannot read that poem and not be touched. You cannot, you cannot stop your, yourself from being provoked to rage when, when you read the poem, your son, you know, where, you know, every, when, when a child is good, it's, you know, it's a father's child. When the child is bad, it's a mother's child. Um, and poems like that, they really touch you as a woman. But I want to talk about two poems that are strikingly feminist, um, which relate very much. I can see them finding their way into my current research immediately because they, they, that's strikingly feminist. Um, and the first one is the poem Turkish Bath in Fez, Morocco. I totally loved, I just fell in love with this poem because I've done some work around the public baths in, in, within the Muslim community. So this is, this is a poem that really brings to light the, the hammam, which is a public bath for women. Um, as a sacred space where, where borders are broken, where differences of nationality, ethnicity, um, language, even religion are completely submerged for the sheer pleasure of enjoying woman-to-woman -woman bonding. So, so it's a space where, you know, binaries of Black, Arab, old, young, um, native, foreigner are, are completely shelved for what I call um, a, a spiritual communion of women. So, so it, it, it is devoid of any artificialities of difference. And the only important signifier in, within this space is the common humanity shared by these two women, women having a bath in, in, in the hammam. Um, so it's, it's, it's a very beautiful poem. I, if you read even the first stanza, it just conveys, it captures that beautifully. And the significance of the hammam in, 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 in Arabic feminist uh, um, politics is very important because it, it is echoed also in this poem um, which describes that experience in, in, in ways that highlights the interdependence of women. Because in this point, we see an old woman bathing a grown woman. I mean, what is more beautiful than that? I just love the assonance of that, of, of the line there. It points, it points to, to what I call meaningful female connectivity that can be achieved when all the boundaries uh, that we, we know are dissolved and what we see is just that connectivity. I call it a language of its own, right? It's a kind of women speak. You know, we have SMS speak. For me, that's a kind of women speak that is only understood by the women in the hammam when they share that space. So like I've argued in some of my work, this hammam experience is a very powerful feminist experience through which women energize, re-energize their bodies, um, the lighting up their spirits, the perk all feminist anxiety, thereby emerging out of it, out of that space as renewed beings. So like the speaker says in the, in the poem, I walked out radiant into blinding sunlight. So, so, so that, that's a complete makeover of a person because of that one experience of having a bath in the hammam. So that's the one poem. The second one, which also really struck me as a very strong feminist poem, is the one something remained. And I think it's built on, a, I have a suspicion it's built on an actual experience in, in Yawundi, if I'm not mistaken. So this is a profoundly feminist poem because it, 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 it's, it's about gender violence in no uncertain terms. Um, the speaker is a woman who witnesses the violent death of her sister in the hands of an abusive husband. Um, but what is most significant is that this is a pregnant woman um, murdered, right? It, like it doesn't even matter. So, so, so the poem mentions the word womb at least four times. The, one, the word womb is in that poem. It's very significant. The number of times that it is mentioned and the ways in which it, it, it is mentioned. So it's a very powerful, powerful expression of humanity, which I link to the feminist concept omomu. Now, omomu 
It's a powerful uh, feminist concept, which talks about the regenerative power of women, right? Chinya Okafo has written about this, and I think um, Kirun Zegu has done a lot of work also. So it's, it's a theory that, that talks about, the, it talks about the biological act of birthing, of bringing a child to life. But figuratively, it's, it's all about regeneration and continuity, providing life. So the, 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 the mother may die, but the child lives on, and so that's continuity. And that, that whole idea of creativity, originality, fecundity, those are all ideas expressed in that very, very powerful poem. And, and this, this concept is coming from among the Igbos of Nigeria, and, and they are the ones who have uh, theorized it, um, where women are, are revered, particularly because of their ability to produce life, to carry life and to bring it. So it's quite sacrilegious for any man to lift his hand up against a woman, and a pregnant woman for that matter. Okay, so what, so what the, the poem, Something Remains, does is to show us women's ability to ensure continuity of society, even when their own lives are faced out. So uh, the poem ends with a beautiful line that says, every woman with a womb is a god. I couldn't agree more. And that just embodies that whole concept of omu which bestows the mothering role on every woman, even girls, because they have the potential to carry that life. And, and, and the mothering we're talking about here is not necessarily biological, it's figurative. So every woman has the mothering capacity. And therefore the poem constructs that womb as the seat of female power because life springs from it and life therefore springs from woman. So Nkiru Zegu has uh, uh, described Omomo as the organizational force that characterizes, um, characterizes as mothering that there's the first right of rule on mothers. Now, if all men could understand the principle of Omun, I don't think any man would lift his hand against a woman. So that's a very, very that's a profound, profoundly feminist point. And these are just two examples. But the collection just breezes life into feminist studies. And like I said, this is definitely finding its way into my current research. So thank you, Dr. Joyce, for the opportunity. Oh, thank you so much, Naomi, and thank you, thank you, thank you. I wonder what you would have done if you were here with us through, uh, throughout, but I look forward to, uh, to meeting you in our annual uh, jambore of ideas. Yep. You know, COVID made us not to yes. meet last year, and this year we are not meeting. By next year, you must have had another collection out, so we can, we can talk about yes. how wonderful. How it, you see, the beauty about um, what I do and how I enjoy it is that I can discuss it at, at a non-scholarly level, and at a scholarly level, the ideas still resonate. And it, it's just wonderful. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, just like uh, the woman world that we are, you've done this, you're going to throw off this scholarly cloak and just be a mother right now. So <laughs> good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> Before I, I would definitely read some of the poems that she mentioned to to close up. But there's a young, um, my young nephew, who is uh, going to read a poem that puts him in the age in which I put myself in this poem. And I asked him, I said, "Would you be okay to read that poem? Uh, it's a sad poem, but thank God it brings a knowledge that I have shared with them." Um, I was 10 at the, this was a year before I lost my immediate older sister. She died when I was 11. And uh, so this poem is titled, When I Was 10. And my nephew, Gerald, is 10 right now. I have always talked about the auntie that they did not get to meet. In fact, his older brother is named Emil after that auntie, Emilia. And uh, is Gerald there? There is Gerald Are. If you can bring Gerald on to share that for him. Hi, Jerry. <laughs> Hi. Okay, so when I was 10. Okay. Go ahead, Jerry. When I was 10, for Amelia Betcham Ashington King. When I was 10, I could not have known it was our last stand as a full family, that six kids would become five. How was I to know that her life would end at 13? The day she broke her li that limb, I carried her like a knapsack, throwing her down when my feeble limbs tired out. 
Our father frustrated, but it serves you right as her leg hung in the air above her hospital bed. It was the fourth limb to break. Our father, too, did not know her life could end at 13 with no more lessons to learn. When the news of her death came, women in muffled tones said they had known. No ordinary child could leave such footprints in our mud. Being old men in storytelling contests, coming first in class year in, year out. Her gender, too, was a sign. No girl, child was strong like a boy, hanging on tiny branches like a boy, playing all sports like a boy, winning every fight like a boy. But I could not have known, I was only 10. Now each year, I measure my feet in her sun-dried footprints. Thank you so much, uh, Jerry. Yes, um, when the news of her death came, women in muffled tones said they had known. No ordinary child could leave such footprints in our mud, beating all men in storytelling contests, coming first in class year in, year out. Her gender too was a sign. No girl child was so strong like a boy, hanging on tiny branches like a boy, playing all sports like a boy, winning every fight like a boy. But I could not have known. I was only 10 like Jerry is now. Now each year, I measure my feet in her sun-dried footprints. And each year, I ask my nephews like Jerry, my nieces, to measure their footprints in her sun-dried, to measure their feet in her sun-dried footprints. Uh, thank you, Jerry. And I can see your mother there. Thank you for allowing him to read. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> OK. So. Um, Lillian? Yes. Did, uh, did you get my message? Check your phone. Mm -hmm. And while you check your phone, I am, is it time for me to do the last round of uh, readings? You can proceed with that or we get one more person to, Nane to, to talk their favorite phone. Okay. Oh, and uh, so Nane is actually going to my, to bearing witness collection. <laughs> and uh, you have the intro for Nane? Or you want me to do my spiel? Because I'm dying to do my spiel. Go ahead, do your spiel. <laughs> <laughs> there, is, there is nothing like going forward and seeing vibrant young women coming behind. And so you know the space would not be empty. And Nana is one of those uh, young women in Cameroon, young poet, uh, who is uh, doing the sorts of, um, of things that I would have even loved to do at her age because she published, uh, she already published her book. And uh, earlier than I, I, I did my first, my first book. And I always say that if I had people who could push me, I think I was ready to publish when I was in high school. I was ready to publish when I was in form five. And, um, She's a vibrant uh, young poet from, uh, from Cameroon, doing so many, uh, many things, belongs it, uh, in many organizations abroad. And when you go to Spears uh, Media to look out books, check out uh, Nanen Tube's uh, poetry uh, collection. And today she'll be sharing uh, one of mine. She's a trained teacher, but she's uh, making her mark more as a poet. <laughs> okay, Nane. Unmute yourself. And this, this poem uh, that she, uh, she told me she was going to read, um, again, I told you that my poetry is just me experiencing the world. You guys must have seen this thing that they now call Northwest and Southwest Noso. The thing can vex me plenty. I'm like, what is, I'm like, what is Noso? It's like, is that a new uh, way and so, this poem captures the way I felt about that. Thank you. Um, I'm going to read from the book, Bearing Weakness, Bearing Weakness Anthology, uh, edited by Professor De Joyce and uh, Mr. Dibusi Tandi. So the title of the poem is Don't Know So Me. Don't know so me. Don't dare know so me. I refuse to take that as I look back in anger. 
I will stand up and fight this. Every name you have given has betrayed your intentions. When you said Federal Republic, I believed you. The two stars on the flag captured two states until you pulled the mat under me. Then you moved to United Republic with nothing united. Even my star on the flag was gone, but that was not enough. Power camp, marketing board, Cameroon bank, and all went. United meant losing myself into you. In United, you marked me Anglophone, the signifier of my inferior status. But the name became me, my scar from a sea session. It spoke of my history and my identity. Even as it marked me as l'ennemi de la nation, then you dropped United with no warning. You could no longer max your plans to usurp. Now in the heat of my renewal, in the fight to reclaim my space, you come up with this new name, Norso, your label for Northwest and Southwest. You shrink me further to reduce me in your eyes, to rob me of my identity and culture, to say I am just a location on a map. How demeaning. Some may fall for the ease of four letters. Some may fall for your cunning kill. Not, this, not me this time. N naming is power, power. You will not know so me. Thank you. <laughs> I was definitely upset, huh? <laughs> Some may fall for that guy of four letter words, huh? Some may fall for that cunning. Not me this time, because naming is power. You will not know so me. No, so me. <laughs> thank you, Nane. <laughs> no, that was a beautiful one. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you, Nane. All the way from thank Cameroon. You. Beautifully read. Thank you very much. Um, before we move on, Dr. J, just a few announcements from Spears. OK. And you do that. hope you're all enjoying yourselves. My name is Jude Fokwan, publisher at Spears Books. Uh, I want to take a few moments to soak in this moment. Uh, Professor Ashun Tangta, when we embarked on this title three years ago, I knew that this moment would come. And so congratulations, we're so proud of you. Um, I just want to share a few announcements with uh, our audience. The book is currently on sale for $10. Uh, so if you go over to Spears Books, uh, spearsmedia.com, uh, you can get a copy of Beautiful Fire for $10. Uh, a couple of other announcements. Uh, we also have a coupon. You can enjoy 25% off every title on our website if you use the coupon BF2020. So BF is Beautiful Fire 2020. So enter that at checkout, you would enjoy 25% off every single title that is not currently on sale. So please take advantage of that and uh, share that with your friends. Uh, we have, I think, uh, very quickly, a um, couple of uh, book launches coming up. Uh, you guys saw Dr. Gilbert Ndi earlier. Uh, his latest title, The Radio and Other Stories, will be launching on May 22nd. So if you can join us for that, we would really appreciate it. Uh, so 22nd May. Uh, I think Babila Mutia, I think you see here, I'm not sure. Uh, his latest book as well will be launching 1st May. So please uh, put that down. And then Martin Jumbam, who will be joining us shortly, I think he has an appraisal. Uh, his own book will be launching on uh, 12 June. So please jot down those dates and um, we would be very, very pleased to have you all to uh, celebrate with us. 
So once again, uh, Professor Ash Ashwin Tang Tang, uh, it is a, a huge honor. I am in Bobidis. <laughs> so uh, we'll make sure that this gets to you. Um, <laughs> this is in celebration of this moment. Uh, I am humbled to call you my friend, my colleague, and above all, a mentor. Thank you so much and congrats. And I see the wisdom there in not popping it because you want it to reach to me. So I, I think I like that because if you popped it, yeah, this it virtual thing, then you. you and your wife would drink it and I'll be sitting here. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, if Lillian has found uh, George, um, I want to tap into George's uh, birthday celebration. So whatever libation they have poured there in Cameroon, I can benefit. And then we can hear uh, Mr. Njumba. Uh, Lillian, did you find jo uh, George? Yep, I must. Okay, he's oh, okay, yeah, he's, he's, okay. I see. I see him is uh, on. So, um, when when you are a family member and a friend, I always drag drag into things. When he was born, I'm going to make his age known because I have a reason for that. He, um, I remember coming to Cameroon in 1990 when his mother was uh, pregnant with, with with him, and now he has reached that age that we are beginning to worry him. You know what the worry is about, right? So any eligible person who is watching, uh, feel free to text me to say, and, and see me to have reached that age that people are worrying me. So, <laughs> so JK, happy birthday. I knew I would be busy here today. Um, he is in uh, Cameroon, senior IT engineer. And uh, happy birthday, and I'm trying to tap into the celebration there, since I'm having a celebration here, so me and you can share. So any words? Uh, Auntie Jay. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> thank you very much for the opportunity. So, uh, <laughs> well, uh, three decades, like they say, wow, it's, uh, I've reached that age too. So uh, where they worry people with the constant question, uh, hopefully you'll be soon, and then uh, the question will, will change. <laughs> so uh, I know this is a poetry meeting. So uh, unfortunately, the, I took more of the numbers uh, genetics from uh, the family. So the whole the literary part I gave it to my aunt. So <laughs> most of the family, anyway, is that way. Most of the family. <laughs> so. Uh, Anyway, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, thank you for giving me a platform to, to, uh, to say these words. Uh, I just pray that God can continue guiding me and protecting our family and helping us in all our endeavors as we uh, continue. Uh, once again, congrats, Auntie. And hopefully uh, we'll keep the flag flying in our various, uh, in our various areas of work. <laughs> thank thank you, you very much. Thank you and, so, uh, so much. Oh, you have something there? So you guys have been pouring have some, some libation? Okay, drink, drink. Libation. Okay, so drink collectively for all of us. So this is for the family in Cameroon <laughs> and around the world and those watching. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, JK. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. And uh, Jake, uh, George Joko is son to my second sister, Dr. Gloria Ashunten. -Tang. So thank you so much, JK. Thank you for representing. <laughs> okay, Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy <Thank> birthday. You. <laughs> Back to you, Lillian. <laughs> okay, so I think we'll move to some more poetry reading. Okay. So uh, let me do, let me get lighter here. Um, I'm going to do... <laughs> Let me do uh, another love poetry. Let's see. You know, with all this uh, internet, you know, especially with this pandemic that we've all been quarantined in, only God knows all the romance that has gone through virtually. So this one is called A Digital Moment. Okay. After so long, I am finally in your digital presence. Seeing is believing. 
You unbutton my blouse with your eyelids. My nipples stare at your brown manly chest. Your passionate gaze forces my lips apart like a helpless fish on a sandy shore. You rise in front of my very own eyes, standing tall and nodding in admiration. I twist and turn on the rhythm of my pulse, doing my choreography of desire. Any moment now, the screen will give way. It's been so long in coming. Oh, oh, so long. So, so long. Okay. And, Thank you, Dr. Um, <laughs> Okay, I'm going to do this one. Um, if Oni is still there, Oni uh, Agbosangai, I'm calling you by your maiden name. I hope your husband is not yet to make me pay a fine. <laughs> uh, this one is titled for uh, a divine born for Brandy, surrogate mom on Mother's Day 2017. Brandy carried the baby for my sister friend Oni. This is something that is not seen is in our culture and I couldn't help but celebrate to write this poem for Brandy. You would never know all of us from Italy to Cameroon the world over. You may never hear the noise of our joy, busting the plastic of helpless phones. You may never see the twinkle in our eyes as we gush at the miracle you carried. The halo of your sublime gift circles our hearts and minds. Today, we bring our basket of thanks for you, our mother angel. Just a little token for our spring blossom. Nothing will ever match your selfless grace. Tomorrow, we will still exclaim and always remember your name, Brandy. How else are we to respond? Your womb is our divine bond. Your womb is our divine bond. And um, thank you, the, Dr. J. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Oni, for giving me that opportunity to write this poem for Brandy. And um, one of the poems that uh, Naomi talked about is your son. This whole idea that um, when a child is succeeding, it belongs to the father. And once there is a problem, it belongs to the mother. And this one captures that. It's titled Your Son. Yesterday, our son was your son alone, as he made touchdowns into your patriarchal heart. You pranced the sidelines, showing off the semblance of your nose. Your chest moving ahead, you said, that's my boy. He's a chip off the old block. Today, he became my son, because the police nailed him with half a pound of weed. Today, he became my son, because no fool like that could have your blood in his veins. Today, he became my son in a cold courthouse with papers to sign. Today, he became my son alone, like when he was inside my womb. Thank you, Dr. J. Okay. You want one more? Uh, we have Martin Jumbam. Do you want him okay. to go ahead with his appraisal? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, let me just find him. There we go. Oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> good to see you. Yes, good to see you, Dr. J. Good to see you. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, thank you very much. I've listened to all the, the poetry and the interventions of people, uh, scholars who have uh, analyze your, your poetry. As I was listening to them, I wondered, wait, should I even say anything at all? Maybe. <laughs> That's why we kept you last, because we oh, know you boy. still have something to say. <laughs> well, thank you very much. But listen, um, I, I, before I tell you what I think about your book, let me take uh, this moment, uh, Dr. J, to pay you a long overdue a debt of gratitude. What, what is this all about? In 2006, uh, my brother Kenjo Jumbam, who is the author of The White Man of God, The White Man of Cattle, Lukong and the Leopard, and many others, passed away. And I was preparing uh, his, uh, the, the little booklet that would be used uh, in church and during his funeral. funeral. His son, Amosa Jumbam, called me from uh, New Jersey to say that a uh, certain Dr. Joyce Ashunkantan has sent him a very beautiful uh, homily, not homily, homage uh, for his father. And I said, well, send it to me. And he did. 
And when I read it, I was completely flawed. And I, you know, included it in the, uh, in the mass uh, program, which everybody had. And you can, it, it was uh, something. Everybody who attended his funeral was pouring over it and, you know, nodding their heads like a, a lizard fallen from a, an Iroko tree. As an image you know better than me. <laughs> and, and it was very well received. So for a long time, I haven't had the opportunity to say thank you on behalf of my family for that, uh, for the, for the, for that uh, homage, uh, that eulogy you paid my brother. Thank, thank, thank you so much. Most people here, when you said white man was of God, I'm sure a lot of people were nodding, nodding their head. And it was just, I had to do that. Kenjo Jubam is one of our best. And I still owe him another thing. His mm. last novel that he did not get to publish, uh, Limbe right. Camp, yeah. mm -hmm. I still mm -hmm. owe him that to make sure that it is published. And he told me himself that it was better than White Man of God. So I am, okay. I'm waiting to hear what the readers would say about that. So oh, thank great. you. Okay, well, we're here, <laughs> you know. But uh, coming back to, you, to your book, uh, as soon as I saw the your book, the title, uh, Beautiful Fire, my mind immediately went uh, to the present context in Cameroon. You know, uh, for someone like me who grew up in the highlands of uh, Nsoolan, very cold areas, fire was a very, uh, fire was warmth. Fire was, uh, uh, gave us food, you know, and we would sit around the fire uh, in the morning and especially in the evening to get the cold out of us. So fire was very positive, very, had a very positive image for us. Then uh, the present day Cameroon, unfortunately, uh, fire in the hands of politicians have become a destructive tool. You know, now uh, differences are now settled around the gun who has the firepower. The struggle now is to see who has the superior firepower fire power to outgun the other. And you see this in one of your poems there, one death is too many. You know, and uh, in what has come to be known as ground zero, as I said, fire is being used as a tool of utter destruction. Houses are being touched, farm products that have long been considered sacrosanct, and rightly so because of the life giving elements are now being torn down from the bands and silos and set ablaze in the plain sight of the farmer. And the poor farmer, he will be lucky if he himself is not uh, further to the fire. And uh, uh, someone read uh, Bearing Witness, the poem from Bearing Witness, poems from Elan uh, in Turmoil, which we launched here, I think it was last year, you know, and uh, there you see the destructive force of, uh, of fire. Just about every poem there, or a good number of poems, talk about uh, fire destroying people. But in, in, your, in your book, I would see the elements too of destruction from fire, although it may not be as intense as in the other poems uh, you wrote in um, Bearing Witness. Other striking images, uh, those of women whose wombs have become the playground for men's loss as rape runs amok throughout many of your poems. Something Remained, that's the title of a poem there. Speaking of, this is dedicated to Kumate Monique that unfortunate woman who died outside the hospital in Douala for lack of care. Throughout these poems, I hear the screams of abused women assaulting my ears. And even where the sensuous and the sensual elements hold hands, there is still a feeling that the woman is on the suffering end of it. Incantations, for example. Even where the erotic holds swear, letter to a poet, for example, the feeling of joy which should normally be associated with such acts is absent and is replaced by a feeling of constraint and dominance. So there is no beautiful fire in the relationships I see in many of these poems. And one remarkable feature of these poems is, your, is the poet's solidarity with suffering humanity as a whole. Not only does she take a firm stand against abuses in, in his homeland, my heart go bust, a powerful poem in Pigeon decrying the neglect that led to the train derailment in Ezeka in 2016, and that killed so many people, which uh, you have, which you read earlier. And uh, as always, you read those poems beautifully. You know, you, the poet also stretched her poetic hand of solidarity to the downtrodden across, across the globe. 
we're talking of Iraq, the abuse of the Kurds, uh, the mon that beautiful monument, if you can call that beautiful, in Bangladesh, because it talks about the death of people there. Then the Hazara, Hazara people, I don't know where those are, where are they, Hazara? Pakistani area. <laughs> oh, Pakistani, okay, where well, there you are. And then Nic Nicaragua, among other places. You know, you, you, you struggle for suffering humanity reminds me very much of Pope Francis. Uh, Pope Francis urges all of us to break out of the cocoon of our indifference and have the courage to go to the peripheries of our, of our cities where the poor people and the marginalized of our society live. And there he asks us to stretch out a hand of charity, a hand of solidarity, hand of brotherly love to the poor. And here uh, you go beyond your comfort zone to light uh, with your poems, the beautiful fire of human kindness. Where such fire has been quenched through human greed, you denounce it very loudly. There's that poem of, uh, of, the, of the poor people in, in, uh, in one of your poems you, you have there where you denounce uh, what the rich people are doing to the poor. Mm -hmm. you see? So all said and done, uh, Dr. J, the fire that burns in your, your, your poems has a cleansing effect because it punctures the hypocrisies of societies, whether local or international, uh, the societies that brutalize women, children, and the defenseless. So these poems are so memorable, I think, because they're expressed in such simple, straightforward language that continue to ring in my ears long after I have finished reading them. And I believe that those who single out this collection of poems for the Book of the Year Award should be applauded for making such a judici judicious choice. Thank you very much. My congratulations. Thank you so much. And um, thank you so much. And talking about thinking about people downtrodden, one of things that we would recognize, uh, uh, thank you so much. And I'll uh, continue with reading. You've mentioned some poems that I would um, um, uh, to wrap up, we go to the next section, I think Lillian, where I share. Let me say a few words about, I, 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 I brought him on without introducing him, but uh, uh, Martin, Martin Jumbam is author of Beats of Memory, which um, Jude mentioned earlier will be launched sometime soon in the summer. And he also recently collaborated with the late Christian Cardinal Toomey to write his memoir, mm -hmm. A Night in Captivity, which Spears Books also published uh, this year. He lives in Douala and works as a freelance translator, conference interpreter, journalist, and motivational speaker. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. Yeah. And I'm 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 so glad to you've taken your time to really comb the collection and the theme that uh, surrounds uh, surrounds it and the duality of the beautiful fire, where it uh, sometimes even the beauty of it hurts, you know. And that's, that's what makes that title so, um, um, it works at different levels. Uh, one of the poems I'm going to read, it's uh, like I say, sometimes in my world, some things annoy me and I just write a poem about it. We all are familiar with the girl who got pregnant in, in secondary school, brilliant girl. First time she tried to do it, she gets pregnant. And uh, in our situation back home, the girl drops out of school, but the boy continues. And a lot of times the boy runs away, you know, and says he's not the one. And uh, sometimes the family of the boy may even, uh, you know, it's like, who is she? She's trying to latch onto their son. She's a prostitute, you know, and stuff. But then many years down the line, the boy emerges, comes back to come and claim the child that he has not been in his life. And uh, <clears throat> sometimes if that father is well to do, he has an easy way because the family are just happy that he is coming to help out. Sometimes the children also want an identity and they're dying for that identity. And so this is uh, this poem, I wrote it with that situation in mind where a woman has to face her daughter as she is trying to latch on to her father and she is uh, trying to take the father's name. You tell me you did not fall from a tree. You have a father and you want his name. So today you carry a piece of paper with a new name, a flashlight of identity. 
They say I'm a good woman because I do not tell how your father laughed at the love that brought me, brought him into my thighs and hung my hymen like a pendant on his neck. They say I'm a real African woman because I do not tell of my nine month agony, his mother mocking my mother at the marketplace, saying his son is no fool to fall for trash like me. They say my stomach is a guarded store because I do not tell you that my brain could find X even in the absence of Y, but your father's P made me a slut fit for no school. They say I have the wisdom of a tortoise because I allowed your father to drive that big car through our family's honor and pain in exchange for that sought after visa to a foreign land. They say you must be grateful to me. I gave up my life for yours to roar, but my child, a paper is a paper. Your identity is beyond paper, remember. And let me go to some lighter uh, poems. Even little things bring out poetry for me. I have a friend who was going to, was ex, uh, had to go for surgery. And I noticed that he was very worried about the surgery. And so the night before the surgery, I called and I said, so how is your mood? And all he said was, I'm looking forward. That's all he said. And that brought out a poem, which I sent uh, to him. And that was my way of encouraging him for that surgery. The poem is titled, Before the Surgery. Looking forward cements hope. Why is a truth harsh on yesterdays? Looking forward clears the dew, wetting paths, firming steps. Looking forward conjures faith, leaving wholeness in its stead. Looking forward, remember? That's all you said. For me, it was enough. And uh, we've gone there for three hours, so. Okay, Dr. J, I was just gonna. Yes. Yes, so let's we take a pause and hear from our members, guests yes, in yes. attendance. So maybe, yeah, we, do the Q, we do the Q and A now. Sure. Okay. So anyone who wants a question, you can raise your hand in the chat so I can identify you. And then call on you to speak. Comment or question, Q and A time. Lillian, were you saying something? I see Fran's hand is, Fran is, okay. Fran is up. I see. Sorry, Fran's yeah. Uh, can I speak? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't want to do video. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> later. Okay. I'm not, the hair is not too nice for video today. But <laughs> I wanted, your words are enough. <laughs> yes. I just wanted to to really tell you in front of all of this audience how proud I am for all the works you do, for everything you do concerning a woman, the struggle of a woman, how they treat them. I've gone through things that you know and how you put them in poems. It just makes me feel um, there is someone there looking and putting the things the way they should be, they should be written. And for that, I'm extremely proud of you, Dr. Uh, Professor Joyce. I just want to encourage you and uh, tell you we're all behind you. Continue leading the flag. You are a mentor. I look up to you for so many things, you know. And um, I will definitely be getting more copies of the books to, for, for my, uh, the Canadian audience here. Thank you. So, thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Fran. Thank you. <laughs> As they say in Cameroon, we are together. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Fran, from Canada. Yes. So Lillian, I don't know <laughs> yes. if yes. I wanted to comment. Um, if it's okay, or take Go just one minute. Thank yes. you. Um, so I don't know where to start. So Joyce and I go back a long way. Prof, congratulations. Um, the first time I bought her book was to support a dear friend because I felt I'm one of those girls that can find an X in the absence of Y. So I have no artistic interpretation of anything. I'm very literal, I'm a scientist, but every time she wrote something, I would go back in her chat and type to her my understanding, my interpretation. 
And she'll be like, you got it. Why don't you write it in public? I'm like, I don't think I have the courage to write. When I see somebody like Gail Shang, who is my little brother, I read the words that flow through when they do an appraisal of anything she writes. So I would always go behind and write a comment to her. And she's like, but you got it. You need to write it out. And I just never had the courage to do it. Yesterday, when she asked me what I can write, read any of my favorite poems, because when I bought this book, I read it from cover to cover without stopping. And for the first time, I appreciated poetry the way that it should be appreciated because it, it spoke to me, it, it resonated with me. And I was waiting for her. I put a comment to her to say, can I have two minutes? Because I wanted her to, re to read Identity. And she finally did it. <laughs> because for me, again, being a child that grew up with STEM, I'm a scientist, science, technology, engineering, math, I was in a school where it was still an affront to people to wonder why a woman, a girl could be in S1. And so it, it, I, I knew a lot of girls that fell in the same place where she describes an identity. I also saw a lot of girls that gave up or hid that ability they can solve and find X because they needed somebody to take them away from their lives in the hills of Nkambe Undu somewhere, maybe with the hope that at some point in the future, they may go to a teacher training college, or they may be, if they're lucky, get to ENS if they had finished high school. So that poem really, really resonated with me. And as I sat through from the first appraisal by Gil and through to the last one by uh, Matt, everything that the relatedness of her poetry, the simplicity of it, the context that speaks to everybody, even if you're not artistically inclined, even if you're not a literary critic of, of poetry, if you just read it for the sheer joy of it. So a hardcore scientist like me read this collection from cover to cover without putting it down. And I constantly go back to the notion that she has this ability to find poetry in the most mundane of places. And I wrote this to her. How do you stay in, go to a Turkish bath and come out of there with the poetry? How do you listen to the rulazes of the soccer football tournament in South Africa and come out of there with poetry? How do you go to Honolulu, Hawaii? How do you do go to a conference? Because I've been in many places where you go to a conference and I have a colleague that is writing a note under the door. Nothing romantic about it, nothing sexual about it, but you want us to meet for dinner today do, because you're both in a foreign land and you need to go somewhere to, to have dinner, to have lunch, to share a ride and all of that. So all of that, she's managed to put it into poetry that all of us can, can appreciate. And I sat through here for three hours and there was no X inside, there was no Y inside. I wasn't finding anything. And I loved it. And I, I enjoyed the reading. I enjoyed the appraisals. I enjoyed, as I put in one of the comments, the reading, the appreciation of it is, is just as much as the first time I read it. And I just want to thank all the other writers on the forum, all the other um, professionals uh, that have read this and brought to us different dimensions and appreciations and understanding of the poetry that some of us did not get the first time we, we read it. So thank you guys very much to begin with to Joyce and to Gil and to everybody else that appreciated and broke these poetry for us today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. <clears throat> Lilian Yangi. Thank you. And for when someone like you appreciates the poetry, then I've reached one of my goals because honestly, I, I always say that I got a PhD because I wanted to have a license so that when I speak, people can know that I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> Other than that, I really love it when the poetry travels. That is the way it's supposed to be. It should not be for the initiated. So thank you. I see Nanes uh, hand raised. Or oh, maybe there's somebody before that. I will go to Nane. OK. Go ahead. Can you, if you can keep it brief, we want to keep it. It's two hours. It's two hours, not three. We want to keep it. We want to keep okay. it under that. Yeah. So if you follow me with uh -huh. the numbers, you'll be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Thank you very much. Um. I've learned a lot um, through these readings and also through the comments, the different comments and analysis from all the other speakers, and I'm more. Uh, 
intrigued by the way you, you make use of images, local images. You, you said they are simple. Yes, they are simple, not far-fetched, but magically and tactfully, uh, magically, tactfully and powerfully used to create or paint everlasting pictures. But now uh, my question is, as a Buddhist poet, I would love to know your secret. How do you create the extraordinary from the ordinary? What should I take note of when gathering inspiration and when building, uh, 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 when writing my poem to build a bold, uh, when writing to build a bold poem? So what should I know? Um, I would be lying if I say that I have a formula. Uh, there are some things that come naturally. I think for me, I see, I see connections in things. And um, so if something hits you, first of all, if you are already hit by something that you want to write about, see how many levels of, uh, I think that's what I would do to consciously look at how many levels can that be presented? You know, because, and then you will start realizing that it could be seen in multiple, uh, in multiple ways. And so like uh, Lillian just uh, talked about uh, the, the poem that uh, I wrote uh, in Hawaii, which is a very, it's, it's a short, uh, let's see here, it's a short poem. And you wonder, okay, or maybe I take incantation. This is an actual incident. I went to go visit a friend and um, she started talking. She was suffering from cancer and she just started talking and talking and I was there to, to give her support. But by the time she was done, I also, the stories that she was telling, before I knew it, as she was telling me about uh, some love affair that went wrong, it had nothing to do with her cancer. We're just gisting. And before long, when I wrote the poem and I, I brought in that incident and I said, that's when the cancer began. But <laughs> that incident, so that means that I have now framed the cancer at different levels. You understand? So I've gone beyond the cancer that she's having. Now I have now seen that cancer as just the problem of womanhood. You know, that's when, you know, because we, cancer is such a thing that we don't know what really causes it and stuff. So I think that is the way to, to uh, bring in many ideas. When you look at a su subject, see how many levels that that thing can be related to, uh, related to and that would, would, would help. For me, I think it comes, uh, it comes naturally. And so it starts with one thing. And before I know it is, um, it is going to, it's going to something, uh, it's going to something else. I was looking for, if I could see something here quickly, 45, it's a short poem called Imperfection. It just came with me. I looked at, I was somewhere, I had flowers and I wanted to save the flowers. And I put them, you know, in, um, <laughs> the flowers were put in, in fact, in a, in an ice box. And uh, not ice box, ice, um, what do you call? I'm, I'm losing my words here. Uh, the ice container. <laughs> and a poem just came to mind. And this is what I wrote. There's something beautiful about imperfection. It never claims to be that which it is not, like flowers blooming from an ice bucket instead of a flower vase like crumbled sheets bearing witness to a sweet sinful yes, like knowing we are still God's children, naked, imperfect. It started with flowers, it ended with naked, imperfect. Don't ask me how, <laughs> but <laughs> I just see things and you realize that you can convey more than one idea. I see many Okay, hands. we have several hands on. I'll call on Emily. Uh, someone who hasn't spoken before. Oh, my yes. sister. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, my <laughs> yes, my sister, Prof. Yes, Doc I Prof. can see you. Yes. And my, my oh. sister, librarian. <laughs> yes. Yes. Congratulations. 
Thank congratulations. You. Uh, you know, the ALA award to me, it, it, came, it comes too late. <laughs> and you've always been the winner. Every word of yours that you utter wins in my ear. And I have to say, your poetry, your poems are a well that I drink from. They resonate so well. And I really thank God and ask for blessings for you to continue because not all of us are gifted with words in the way you are. Your poetry speaks not just to us Cameroonians. They are so global in impact. Everybody with whom I have shared your work just loves it. And I have to say, you know, our work, I mean, you and I go back, you know, <laughs> and what you say about us, about our condition, about our dreams, about our rights, simply having the right to exist. You know, you're giving voice to many, many who are silenced, and you, you have no idea what that means. I just want to thank you, take this opportunity to publicly thank you for what you do and for the voice, your voice. This voice, it is not just your voice and many, many people's voices. And I hope, I hope that um, those of us who read your poems or who hear about you, that we don't just sit and applause. And I hope that the applauses are turned into action because listening is a passive thing, even though I enjoy your poetry. I really, really do. I mean, like the romantic ones, Dr. Prof, honestly, I mean, they just fire me up. I love them. <laughs> and again, you know, each one of your poems words should turn, be turned into action. You know what I mean, right? So, so I, I just want to really, uh, that's just so compelling, just so compelling. And uh, the, this thing, I just got my second dose of the vaccine and there's light at the end of the tunnel. Next time we're together at one of our meeting places, we are gonna raise the roofs, okay? And if you, <laughs> if you hear something coming from Wisconsin, please, please respond. And we would love to have you. And I want the world, I want the world to hear you direct. Thank you. Thank you. On the ensemble. On the ensemble. Merci. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Emily. Thank you um, so much. Thank you, sis. Easy. If you can turn your video on, I can spotlight you. Lizzie Bronte. <laughs> Grand beep. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> so unmute yourself. So let me go without the video, if you don't mind. Okay, that's fine, Lizzie. I, I, I'm going between projects here, Dr. J. I wanted to say something that I've, I've, I've been meaning to say for a long time, to thank you for demystifying education and holding a PhD. Because through you, I learned something very quickly that we don't have to use big words to impact lives. We don't have to be uppity and unapproachable because when you're unapproachable, the truth is you impact less. I remember when I was going to give a presentation for my first time, I was a nervous wreck. It mattered to me that I speak up. I just didn't know how. And um, Dr. J, you dedicated your time at a convention, you mentored me within a couple of hours and I was struggling because I felt like my English had to be perfect. It had to be right. And you said, leave that in. Some parts have just put your pigeon for inside, not the team who go see, understand. And I, I, that sense of relief that came through me empowered me to go up on that stage and speak. And that is what you do. I'm sitting in my bathroom, I'm cleaning, I'm breathing hard, I'm sweating. I'm listening to what 
used to belong to the aristocrats. You brought poetry to us, you. you know, in different languages. This is something that doesn't happen often. So I want to encourage you and I want you to know that many of us may not tell you how we feel or how you make us feel, but you impact us in so many different ways that goes beyond poetry. And I want to encourage you to keep doing that and just keep leaving that legacy. Keep trailblazing, we're behind you and we're cheering you on. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lizzie. Nice hearing that, thank you. I'm empowered. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Lizzie. Uh, we'll take two more and then we'll wrap up. Um, we, we re Ali Usmano. Ali, you stay till the end. <laughs> Where's Ali? Did he drop out? Ah, there we go. Unmute yourself. Ali, you need to unmute. Okay, while he's, he's figuring out, maybe we'll, we'll go to Gilbert. Ali, we'll okay. You. Yes, Lillian, thanks very much. I mean, my, mine is not really a question because I'm going to have much time to question Joyce. I just want to make a very beautiful announcement that um, I'm going to have uh, interviews with 10 key African authors uh, for the Latin American public um, as from August. We are going to pre-record them, I mean, between now and August so that they will be run, I mean, like, uh, as from August, between August and December. So Joyce is one of them, and I'm going to have 45 minutes, one hour long dialogue with her on her on her poetry, on not only poetry, of course, I mean, she's beyond poetry. So stay tuned. I will make that public, of course. I will, I will, I will coordinate with uh, Spears to make sure that, I mean, you have access to those interviews. Uh, Joyce and many other African authors, 10 of them. Thank you so much. I, it's it's a, such an opportunity. Can't Thank wait. You. <laughs> You're wonderful. All right. Now we can hear you, Ali. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, look, uh, I just want to take a few seconds here just to celebrate and applaud my high school Nguaykele <laughs> friend and colleague, classmate in those days, Professor Joyce Ashutangtang, who like she said earlier, from Form 5, maybe she should have published if you had somebody to, to, uh, to uh, you know, to support her. But then who has, from that time immemorial, kept her flame ablaze in what she does best and had attained this height that we are celebrating today and has won for herself and for us, her family, all these laudable hours. I want to uh, celebrate and praise her and also to thank her for being so astute in knowing how to keep her circle and keep them. All her friends, her classmates who worked together with her 30, 40 years ago, she's known how to bring them together. And here we are. For that, Professor Joyce, I want to thank you and to celebrate you and say congratulations. Please keep the flame burning for us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Like I always say, support from my peers means so much to, to me because you guys saw the beginnings, you know, and uh, like you said, it's, it's easy to go to the top, but it's not easy to maintain, <laughs> to, to stay aflame. So thank you. Thank you. And I, each time I see any of you, it warms my heart because you know me from, from. <laughs> oh, <sure. laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, we have just a few minutes left, and I'll take the next three speakers, and then we'll wrap up. There's Ken Kessel, Bakume Tesi, and Jackie Atan. And please keep your remarks to uh, less than a minute, if you can, please. Thank you. Oh, that will be. I'll start with Ken, Ken Kessel. Lillian, that's me. I'm signing on Ken's uh, computer. Oh, I, I, was, I was ready to talk to my Moyo, not you. <laughs> Sorry, your Moyo still get jet lag. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> so I just wanted to take this opportunity to add on to what uh, Ali Osmano was just saying. Uh, you know, Professor Dr. J is someone that I've always admired. And uh, she is uh, really a mentor that I look up to. I have learned from her that, you know, if you trust in what you're bringing into any space that you inhabit, you kind of uh, lead just by being present and, be true tr and being true to yourself. So that's what I've really learned from her. And I, I can't even begin to talk about the poetry because it's something that resonates for all of us, especially in, you know, in the support and uh, enlightening you know, for us as women and putting us at the forefront. So it's really, really, really a pleasure to know you. And I want to thank you for all that you do and for the inspiration that you bring for all of us. So many thanks and keep thank the you. flame burning. Thank you, Maggie. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. I, I see my friend uh, Imelda Samba, my sister friend. I see her typing on the, on the forum. She's not able to be on video. Imelda, I send my congratulations, or, <laughs> or I receive my congratulations rather, and I'm so glad that you are there. And uh, of course, my bosom friend, uh, Bakume is right here in front of me, so. <laughs> Please unmute, Bakume. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, but well, I have had just a smiling morning. You know, I just want to bring out a point that today here in Canada or Montreal, we are always cold, right? And today happens to be that sunny day and I'm looking through my window, the sun is booming, but I am so hot and absorbed here as if I'm taking a walk out there because of everything I am hearing. And Mabato, I, people are, we always call her that. <laughs> yes, you know. uh, when they talk about appreciating your poets you know we go to the life you know we we come to the age we i mean we grew together everything and i just want to tell you you make all of us proud you know when i talk all of us thank you <laughs> you know and um congratulations my dear sister okay. i just give you my prayers that the sky is, should not even be the limit, as they always say. Rise above it. Thank okay? You. And Thank you. Almighty, continue holding your hand and right, making you go wherever that he has opened that path. So we are so proud of you and we thank you so much for all the inspiration and the joy and how you lift us up, even from our different corners where we feel low. You know, this lady sitting here, she's so vibrant. I don't know when there is a dull moment in her life. That is just battle. Whether we walk on the street from when we were little, there is Makosa playing, come and see it, you know? And she is just like that till today. Thank you, my dear sister. And may God be with you forever. Thank you, thank you. Amen, amen and amen to that. Auntie Jackie. Um. Hello, everyone. Ha, huh. Dr. J. Um, you know, <laughs> there are not enough words. You know what, how I feel about you. You are just so versatile. You can bring life to any dull moment. Thank you so much. This is a great work. I haven't read most of the poems yet, but um, I would say um, those I have listened to and the comments are just so wonderful. You know the which ones I like best. Thank you so much for your great work. Thank you. This to me is just a springboard. You're going to go further, higher and higher. Thank you so much for who you are, as simple as can be. I know, you know, usually I like to write, but I just don't seem to have enough time. But um, I will need some more lessons from you so mm -hmm. I can put poetry together. My daughter was just commenting with her and she writes poems, but somehow she just never puts them together. So I was telling her, you need to write your poems, send them to Dr. J. She would help you put them together or do whatever you guys do with uh, poetry. 
I'm not much of a poetry person, but I like to write. It's just one of those things. Thank you so much. May God continue to bless your work. We love you so much. Thank you. God bless. <laughs> Liliana, we come to the end. Yes. Yes, we okay, have. So I want to thank everybody on. And as you saw behind me, I am dedicating all this to my parents who led the foundation. And um, my older sister is here. She, she's a lady of few words and never wants to talk. She wants to just be at the background enjoying everything. But she's seeing everything because after this, she will give me commentary and give me commentary. And her commentary will be so, so detailed. Much, uh... <laughs> <laughs> so that's my older sister, Mrs. Mata Zama. And uh, if I am what I am today, it's because she led the way. She's our first sister. And if there's anything that I do, it's because she did it. She paved the way. She's our trail, our trailblazer. Yeah. And um, when I dedicate things to my parents, she may not be ready for me saying this, but when my our parents died, she was 28. And she's been leading the family since then. And um, thank you, Sister Mata. It's my opportunity to say, um, I have the support from people outside, but I have my uncle at home. And uh, so I know you don't want to say anything, but there's no way you would be alive and well and on this call without me drawing attention to you. So it's your right of refusal to speak right now. <laughs> you, make, you make me want to speak. <laughs> 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 yes, Joyce, thank you. In fact, what just came through my mind was how true that uh, <clears throat> this saying that uh, a prophet is never respected in his own home or <laughs> something like that. I feel so embarrassed to tell all of you that I don't even own a copy of Beautiful Fire. <laughs> I've never read it. I've not even read through it. And when I listened to her, I listened to all the comments. I said, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, the only thing I, the only way I feel is that, like, ooh, I'm proud she's my proud, sister. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I can assure you, I'm going to get a cup. In fact, don't even give me, I'm going to buy one. <laughs> it's on sale today. Yes, $10. I'm, going, I'm going to get one and make you sure need I to get more it. than one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And just like the little nephew, and just like our little nephew said, even listen to, to him, he said, she is on <clears throat> she took the other um genetic makeup, the literary side, and most of us went to the numbers. <laughs> and that's why sometimes it's difficult for us to relate with what she's doing. But I'm so, so proud of her and uh, all of you who are supporting her. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. <laughs> OK, thank you, Spears Media. Um, it may not have occurred to me to organize a reading for winning an award. Um, but you guys brought the idea to me. And now I'm glad I did because I realized I didn't even have a book launch. Yes, I had one in my university, but I didn't have a public one. And so I can never say enough good things about Spears books. I, I think I have found a home, a publishing home. Um, you guys are doing a marvelous job when it comes to marketing. A lot of uh, our indie African publishers don't, they just publish the work and that's it. But you guys are meticulous, not just in what you put out there, you put out stuff that is valuable, that is well edited, that can represent us anywhere in this world. And as for your strides in marketing, I doff my heart, uh, my, my, my heart out. Uh, and I am always ready uh, to, to help. Uh, you recently brought me on the board and I hope through that, I would also continue to give ideas to uh, improve the game. It's already good enough for me, but like I always uh, say, there's always room for, for improvement. So we, we see uh, different ways that you can grow. So thank you, uh, the Spears team. And uh, thank, you, thank you, Lillian. And thank you all of you who are still here up till now. I still, uh, I see Emilia, I see Ali, I see Martin, I see Nane, I see Gwen, and Nambi, oh, my sister-in-law all the way from Cameroon. 
I see Belinda, Katie Zama, Beatrice, Iti Chocola, Dorothy, <laughs> Dr. Betty, Gwandi, Emelda Samba. It's a fest of family and friends, and I'm just excited. I'm uh, happy, and uh, we are together. I see Dr. Yunis uh, from Bele is still there uh, from Cameroon. So thank you all for sticking with me to the end. My only regret is that it's virtual, mm -hmm. because this is when we would have been sharing a drink, munching, and then some time for, wine. Yes, and now and it will be time Ancola. for the creation uh, committee. Uh, <laughs> that at, at Trobuk one side, small better story star flow. <laughs> So uh, <laughs> you can tell I'm missing that. So thank you, Lillian. <laughs> but like I said earlier, the beauty is that we we got the world together, right? Yes. And we brought, yes. Oh, we you can you can yeah poetry yeah. from all over the world. You know. Yes. Yes. We got yes. people to know that this is this is how far you've traveled and you're still traveling. Yes. Yes. Um, that, that was a wonderful yeah. part. That's one thing that uh, the virtual world is telling us that if, even after COVID, we can still. Uh, come together like this. How wonderful to get um, uh, Aminu Rahman was calling in from Bangladesh. It's a uh, midnight, uh, it was midnight there. And uh, Amal Gamal from Egypt, you know, it, it's, it's wonderful. Johnny Bako from Colombia. It's, it's, it's wonderful. Um, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Congratulations, Bato. Thank you. Hey, my other sister, <laughs> the original doctor. <laughs> you must be with one of the phones. That's yeah. uh, George's mother. <laughs> okay. Somebody is saying the coupon has expired. Can you check on that, please? Okay, thank so you. So we have Sister a sale Girl. on the book today. For those of you who don't have a copy, it's ten dollars on our website. If you go there, get a copy. If you want autographed copies, it's a little extra because that signature will not come to end of the day. <laughs> but so, uh, Sister Mata, your daughters have the book. It's in their house. So if you didn't, if you didn't read it, but Mambo has it, has read it cover to cover, and Katie too. So at least let me put a plug for them. <laughs> okay, Th thank you. Uh, I just sent my money. I just zailed you for my two autograph copies. Okay, I will. Oh, I should have said that that uh, if you want autograph co uh, copies, then you can zail use my cell phone number or cash up, and I would. Uh, send them out to you. Well, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Jill, like I said, this is the part where I'm so happy it's happening because like I mentioned, this will be an opportunity for the rich and famous to dress up in their ball gowns and tuxedos, sit somewhere in a nicely scented room yeah. with hors d'oeuvres and then you will be reading some of us would not even have that opportunity. No, but, so, but Lizzie, right now you can organize that and we still dress up that and I still come and we have hors d'oeuvres. You know that I operate at every level now. That, that's what I'm saying. This mm -hmm. num Number one, this one is even perfect because we could listen from anywhere. I'm cleaning my bathroom, sweating. That's Your true. Speaker, I'm listening. So thank you so much. But what I'm going to say is that we can do that one too. You know, we do we the, can, this one. Yes. Yes. When things open up, we will. Yes. We should, matter of fact, yes. we should. On, on cocktails and others. There's nothing, nothing ends well without a glass of good Especially wine. Especially the cocktails. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, have a good evening, ladies. Well, uh, thank, thank you, you. and I think you should stop the recording so that we can chat if we want to. Yes, before we, go we would formally recording. come to a close at this point. We thank you, Dr. J, for being such an awesome <laughs> ambassador and champion of SPS Media. And uh, we are so, so, so proud of all you have done and continue to do. And we know you will keep going places. So thank you and congratulations. Thank and with you. that, we'll come to a formal close of the program. Thank everybody for being here. And uh, do make sure you join us for our future book launches, which we announced earlier. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.